I think Becca's fine. That was good. All right, baby, one more time. Another Monday we don't miss. A Tulsa Life podcast, most authentic, most organic podcast in the world. Yes. I switched it up, bro, with the world. It's not, it's not, not just LA oh, no more, the world. We've expanded. Yeah, we expanded. So your host, Dusko, today didn't could have make it because you're a little hungover. So <laughs> <laughs> so we have the one and only Miss Becca in the house What's today up, filling in. Hello. And we did bring on Becca because we had a female legend. She hosts her own podcast. She is very, like I was telling you guys, she's very influential. And I've told her, very influential with her content intentional but we have miss jessica flores Thank in the you. house what an yes. intro, what an intro. <laughs> off the top of my head i don't prepare for this i like that i could tell like i could tell you're yeah, <laughs> yeah i guess so with the moment yeah i get super nervous that's why i start sweating you know fat people sweating <laughs> he practices your name like 10 times in his head yeah like um it's jessica Spanish jessica and then jessica jessica, jessica. Jess- jessica. did he call it jessica or jessica my parents call me jessica but yeah for either one <laughs> when they get mad at you como te llama uh jessica like very aggressively. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, with love, how did they say it? Um, just regular. Jesse. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jess. Yeah. That's how you know things yeah. are good. It's about how you say it, you know? E. The aggressive tone. Is there a nickname that you have? That Actually, my first radio name was probably, actually, no, in high school it came out was J Flo. J Flo. So, like, Jessica Flores. <laughs> so, people in high school call me J Flo. You know how to rap? Huh? You know no, how to rap? no. Spit a rhyme? No. <laughs> Definitely not. No, that's not a sing. Do you know how to sing? I grew up singing like mariachi music and stuff like that. Yeah, like I, I would like some of your Selena stuff. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Selena was like I would just watch her music or her like her um, movie and mm-hmm. listen to her sing, and I would just try to mimic her voice. So Selena was super influential yeah. for me. Yeah. Oh man. So yeah. that how we do. We always take it back because we see the Jessica that's here about to hit hundred hundred k followers on Instagram. Hosting events for Rancho Mile, content, talking about spirituality, talking about healing, yeah. and everybody follows that and loves that. But we get to a point where we have to find out, okay, what did it take to become this person right here, right? And we've had a, 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 lot, of, a lot of guys on the podcast, and we talk about our story. But, you know, women can't really relate to a guy's story in that mm-hmm. sense because we're... We're one way, we're prideful, you know, we're hard-headed. We're like, now nah, we're good, nothing's wrong, but reality, we're fighting a lot of stuff. But yeah. in reality, also, what people don't really think about it or comprehend it is you guys as women take on a lot of stuff without even saying one word to anybody. Mm. You just put on a smile and you keep moving forward. Yeah. Right? So for the ones that don't know, where did you grow up in? Um are you uh, one sibling? How many brothers and sisters? So kind of give us a background on that. Yeah, I grew up actually, well, my parents started out in South Central. Then they moved to Hawthorne. Then they moved to like a San Pedro area. My dad was an extremely hard worker, came from nothing, would pick up tires from like dumpsters and put them in his old truck and like slept in a shack with a half a cut mattress because even the mattress wouldn't fit there. So he really started from the ground up and hardest worker I know ended up buying a house in um, Rancho Palos Verdes, which is, you know, that's, I moved there probably when I was like in the fourth grade. So my dad really came from like absolutely nothing just and did everything he could live the American dream, barely spoke English. You know, he's like that story that you hear about of Latinos coming here and saying, there's no excuse, you know, it's not going to be easy, but I'm going to do what I can. And he did it. And he built like, honestly, such a beautiful life and gave me and my three brothers opportunities to have three Two older brothers and one younger brother. So super, super blessed for that for wow. sure. Yeah, he's awesome. He's insane. <laughs> Was in growing up where, so you were moving around schools a lot or did you stick to one like city in the school? I pretty much stick to one city in school. So I went to Catholic school. It was like kindergarten through eighth and it was one of those schools where it was like, the same 30 people yeah, from kindergarten class, through And then that's who you follow. <laughs> yeah, like that. I was in the same stuck. class, but at Tracy. Oh, okay, so, so the same, same thing. Yeah, well, we live in Bonaparte, 
or grew up in Baldwin Park. Yeah. Same thing. I started with 20 kids in kindergarten. Yeah. Same 20 through sixth grade. Same 20 for two classes, seventh and eighth grade. And I yeah. think freshman year too. Yeah. So you understand like yeah. the small yeah. school struggle yeah. for sure. If you don't get along with someone or whatever it's it might game be. Over, basically. It's game over basically. game over. And unfortunately for me in elementary schools when like the intense heavy bullying started. Yeah. Because in, in an area like Palos Verdes, although, you know, we're not dealing with crime. We're not dealing with a lot of the other stuff that maybe other neighborhoods are dealing with. Yeah. Um, I did experience, though, was like a lot of racism and, and because there's not a lot of Latinos out there. And because it was such a small school, I was maybe the only Latina sure. in like that I really knew about in my whole entire school or even class. So from an early age, I was like heavily bullied. Kids would make fun of my mom's accent because it was a small community. Everybody knew my mom, everybody knew how she spoke. And I was living kind of like a double life, like my whole entire childhood. It was like, I would go to school and try to act white or try to like, you know, simulate, right? And then I'd go home and then be my mom listening to El Rosario or like, yeah, and then I'm Jessica, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like a lot of that for sure. So I was like probably the unhappiest, most depressed, um, version of myself in elementary school when I was going to school up there, for sure. You were going through, like, an identity crisis, in a sense. Huge. Right? <clears throat> but, again, it happens so much um, when we're younger because you want to be a part of the cool kids. You want to be known by everybody and loved by everybody. But mm. also you just want to fit in and you, just be, like, interacted with other kids because yeah. that's your only, like, your free time, right? Because when you go back home, you only have your brothers. Yeah. So this is your only other time to interact with other girls. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, and then apart from that too, but kind of fast forward, right? But now where we're at with our, with our uh, movements, with our intentions on how we run social media, it's literally trying to encourage and trying to motivate others to like, yo, be true to yourself. Yeah. However, however it may be, if people like you, if people don't like you, if you lose friends, if you gain friends, mm -hmm. just be authentically yourself because it's like... Um, watching the Notorious movie, right? It's a, a funny fact, but when he is a all good boy inside of his house in front of his single mom, but when she leaves to work, he goes upstairs, goes into the to a drawer, and starts putting on all these the Air Force Ones, the gold chains, and now he's just a different persona. Yep. But dealing with with racism, dealing with bullying, yeah, like how did that affect you? going into high school and, you know, learning more about yourself. No, it did big time. Like, my self-esteem was so low. I mean, like, because there was, in particular, like, a group of, it was, like, girls in my class that, I mean, from kindergarten all the way up until middle school where I actually finally found a voice and I stood up for myself and then they became friends with me because I actually had respect. <laughs> like, I actually, like, stood up against them for, like, the first time. But yeah. all throughout elementary school, I do, I have memories of, you know, girls saying, you look like my maid or something like that. Or, you know, I remember I went to another oh, girl's house and it was like her older sister and she was like, there was like a gardener outside, like gardening, you know, their beautiful house and stuff. And yeah. she looked at me and she's like, I hate Mexicans, oh, so loud. And then she like went up to her room. This was like her older sister that did that. And so I just always remember feeling I'm like name drop. No, just kidding. <laughs> name drop. Oh my God. <laughs> wherever, wherever you are. <laughs> I remember, like, no. where exactly did they live again? <laughs> <laughs> but I do remember, like, a lot of these experiences made me feel like, oh, my gosh, is, is it shameful that I am Latina? Is it shameful that my parents come where they come from? That's what it felt like to me for so, so, so many years. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't until I found my voice, and then that's when I recognized, you know what, if you actually stand up for yourself and who you are, then it's like they can't really say anything yeah. to you. It's when you allow mm -hmm. people to push you over. Um, so then when I went to high school, I kind of came off PV. It's like another school called Bishop. It's in Torrance. There's a lot more diversity there. I found people that like look like me that came from my background and I thrived. I like thrived. I loved high school. It was a completely different experience. How was the switch though from like the private to the public school? Oh, it was, it was Catholic as well. It was a oh, okay, Catholic okay. Um, private. I went to Catholic school all the way up until college. But the population was more Hispanic, Latinos. Yeah, yeah how was, how was, so how was that switch from dealing with from, yeah, like, trying to fit in with, with, these, with this group of people to, how you said, finding people that look like you and resemble 
Oh, like, hey, like, she likes the same shit that I like. Yeah. No, it was crazy because, like, in elementary school, I'd talk to the other girls in class and they'd be, you know, they'd be talking about all these shows that maybe my mom wouldn't let me watch or, like, I just didn't have because my mom didn't believe in having cable. Cable. Yeah, I only had, like, the basic channels. So all these girls would be like, do you even watch this or, like, things like that? And I'd go home and I'd just be watching novelas and stuff. So I couldn't, they didn't relate to me and I didn't relate to them. (laughs) But then when I actually went to high school and I met people that were like, oh, yeah, like, that's normal. Like, that's that's what we do. Like, we're Hispanic. Hell yeah, Watch that shit. Exactly. I'm like, oh my God, yeah. Jose Luis. Jose Luis. Jose Luis. <laughs> I'm like, these are my people. So I, it was an easy transition. It was like, oh, I'm home. Like and I felt like I was at home for the first time. And you played sports. I played sports. Yeah. Intensely. That was my thing for sure. Was there a reason why you found level sports or is this something that let you be who you were, which is fearless, tough, like, how, what sport did you play? And like for everybody that's, I'm, for everybody that doesn't know, what sport yeah. did you play? So I played soccer. That was my sport since I was like five years old. And the person that got me into sports were my dad. My dad was one of the best like long distance runners in the world. So he was waking me up at five years old, eight years God old, 10 damn. years old. He'd pull me out of school, take me to Mexico and Zacatecas. And he would make me do like 10 mile hikes with weights on our ankles. Me and my brothers, he'd put Bible verses and a speaker on his backpack all through, like he'd wake up at 3 a.m. and we'd just be going for hours and hours and there was no complaining, single file line, like boot camps, like military like type vibes for sure. So (laughs) I hated it at the time. Now I'm like thankful for it, but he is the one that for sure pushed me in like the athletic. Were your brothers also uh, soccer players? Yeah, they, they never really made it to college or anything like that. They were also, like, runners. But I would say for sure, out of everybody in my family, I was the one that took to athletics the most. So my dad really connected well, with me in that way. Why do you think that is? Like, you have three other brothers. <laughs> You're the only girl. Yeah. And why do you think you thrive in sports when, <clears throat> as, as cliche as it sounds, and it sounds pretty harsh, but, yeah. you know, if we have a dad that's pushing us in sports – the guys are going to thrive because we want it more. Right. But here you are breaking that barrier and breaking that, um, how do you say, breaking that normality, right? Mm -hmm. Here you are succeeding, going to college, playing the sport. Yeah. So what do you, why do you think that was? Like what did, what did sports do for you that you made it like your main thing? My thing? Yeah. Um, Well, with my brothers, they were always very book smart. They were old, like, that was just their thing. And I do think everybody has, like, their differences. My oldest brother's a doctor now. He could sit there and study for 10 hours. I could never. Like, my ADD (laughs) would, like, never (laughs) allow me to do that, right? And then my other brother's just super smart at business and, like, making money. Everybody in my family has, like, their thing. For me, it was soccer. Like, when they put me in at five, Mm -hmm. I just... Right. That was it. They put me in every other sport, ballet, tennis, hated it, hated it. Soccer, I would get the ball and just score, did, did you have score, to, score. Were you trying to prove a point to people during high school? Maybe even middle school or elementary school. I think I was in so much pain in elementary school. Like, mm-hmm. this is going to sound, this is actually something I don't, I've never even spoken about, like, publicly. But even in elementary school, like, I would have, like, even sometimes suicidal thoughts type deal. Like, that's how much I would hate being at school and I would like come home and I still felt like super alone and isolated because I don't think my parents understood what I was going through. Mm -hmm. Obviously nobody at school understood what I was going through. So it was like a very tough thing. So I would just bury myself in priding myself in being the most athletic, at least girl in class. Like I was, if a new kid came into my school, like in elementary middle school, I would test him. (laughs) I know seriously, like my best friend now, but when she came in second grade, I was like, can we race? Because I just wanted to make sure I was still the fastest girl. Because I was like the only thing I had. I know. I was like, no one's taking my throne. I need to win every jogathon. I need to every PE. I need to be on the winning team. Like that was my thing. No, I I think I did that even in in junior high because from elementary to from kindergarten to like sixth grade, like it sounds funny as fuck, but like I was a chubby ass kid. Like, yeah, I played. Stop, Stop laughing, fool. Look at that. Look at that. Look at my support That's system right. that I have. <laughs> but the I did play soccer during then and even during recess, like right? You're trying your fifth graders playing against sixth graders and I'm trying to beat your ass. Like we're gonna win and and we do, right? But one thing that switched in junior high was now you have PE. Now you have a class you where have to do it. you you could do it or you could be like the cool kids and just walk in the back, not just chilling, not yeah. doing shit. Thirteen minute miles. 
<laughs> but I said, fuck that. Like, I, I want I want to be that cool kid, be yeah. respected, you know, be liked. So even during lunch, I was, like, running and, like, Everybody's wearing the what was it like the gray the, the gray the I had the red shirt, shirt. Oh I had God. the black I shirt I was like I got options here <laughs> they're like <laughs> damn like, what do I want to wear today I was like I'm putting in overtime bro yeah you want to prove something like when you feel like everything else you have nothing else it's like I'm gonna dominate in this yeah when I can. but it's not how you said right now feeling lonely feeling empty my parents didn't understand that being looking like this put me in a situation where. Yeah, I might not be liked by, even as a kid, as mm-hmm. young boys, man, that's my crush, but she's not going to look at me because I'm not cool like that. Mm-hmm. I don't look to par. But even now, now it's giving encouragement to, you know, no matter how you look, be confident in your yeah. in your own skin. Yeah. And if you have an issue with that, let's go change it. Yeah. Yeah. Get up earlier. Go, to, go work out. Go work on your mental health. Mm-hmm. But as kids... We're trying to learn that all at one time. Yeah. And it's just learning how to express it. You go to college, you you make it to... Wait, you, can I ask a question, though? A huevo, tu dilo. Like, you, said <laughs> that, <laughs> you said that. <clears throat> you had, like, these thoughts when you were younger. Mm-hmm. When you were that age, did you know you were having those thoughts? Or did you just realize now that you're older, like, dang, when I was seven, eight years old, I was thinking of these things. Yeah, no, like my I... emotions were that deep back then, too. They were that deep. Like, I knew, I, I knew, I think I might, I think I was probably a little bit older, though. I was probably, like, nine or ten. It was probably, like, even sixth grade, fifth grade, where I was, like, I knew in I my mind, like I was, like, I don't even want to be that's here. That's, like, the time where your body starts becoming uncomfortable. Yeah. And everything, so... Oh, for sure. And, like, the girls in my class, like, at the time were very pretty, like you know blonde hair blue dyed and then I was just kind of like this like tomboy like little Latina looking little boy because like I was raising running. all boys <laughs> just like running like seriously you know they would kind of be doing their own thing at recess and I would just be with the boys not because I was like a boys girl but because I bonded with them over the fact that yeah. at least in middle school I could kick their butt you know maybe when we got older you know men kind of tend to get yeah, a little yeah. bit stronger but in those days it was like those were my people that I would gravitate towards mm-hmm. so yeah I would go home and I would just I knew like you were like yeah. depressed and, yeah I think a question that I would do want to ask both of you guys is it harder for a girl or what does a girl go through to try to fit in when we grow up? Us as guys, we got to make sure we look the best, right? We have the, the shoes, the clothes, the haircut, and, you know, we look the part of being fit. But for girls, how do, how do you guys handle that, you know, when you may not like your own body? Like, mm-hmm. what, is, what is that? What, is, what happens? What, what, do, what do you guys go through? Because I don't think that's really talked about right like mm-hmm. us as guys like oh yeah we're, we're fat we're gonna just work out and then we I look like at it's easier for a guy just to <clears throat> like put on a fresh fit right yeah and that boosts your confidence like mm. haircut too i a went haircut. from a 5.5 a to a 7.5 at one point you have a haircut and your fit can be bummy you're good yeah. to go right for yeah and even like even if you look really good you're still gonna get hate if you look yeah. no matter what girls you you can't win like at all especially and i even I feel even worse, I think, for this new generation of girls because oh, as great as, you know, social media would have been great for me back in the day because I could have mm-hmm. gone online and been like, no, I don't live in this bubble. I had no social media. Mm-hmm. I had no even yeah. TV yeah. like that. So I really thought the whole world was like PV, I guess, at that time. Yeah. Um, but now you can go online and find your community. But also in that same sense, you see so much comparison. And yeah. I feel yeah. so scared and so bad for the younger. Well, it's just like um, how I've heard it. Some before it's like I heard I know one one dude and every time his Air Force ones get dirty, he goes and buys new ones. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn, oh, bro, wow. I've been I've been wearing the same fucking shoe for the last two years. Mm-hmm. Right? And and everybody brags about having the newest clothes and having the newest shoes, yeah. freshest haircut every week. But what no one brags about is how are you doing mentally and emotionally mm-hmm. and physically? Yeah. What yeah, are you, you good, are you how? rich are you rich in those areas or are you just rich on the outside part where everybody yeah. gets to see that but even how you how you guys are saying how you said earlier your dad went from not knowing a single word of, of English and trying to, and getting tires to building this this house and this environment for his kids family. and what a lot of people don't know is all right what did it take for that right oh, so yeah. as kids we don't know that like dad I want new shoes Oh, sí, mijo, sí, mijo, para la, pa la otra. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, why does he have, I know back then I was wearing the 50 cent, uh, the game, the, the Hurricanes, and then the G-Unit yeah. shoes. But I didn't know what my dad or my mom did mm-hmm. 
how many hours they work in yeah, order to buy me so hundred dollars shoes. Yeah. And now when us being older, you know, we go buy a hundred dollars shoes. You know, ah, cuánto? <laughs> I'm feel like, that. You know what? I'll, 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 I'll put it on my Christmas yeah, list. Como dijo mi mamá, hay cupón, hay cupón. I'm like uh, looking at um, coupon yeah. codes. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah, so no, for, for, for those, I think you guys can be a, a perfect voice right now to for the girls that are, you know, worrying about how they look, mm -hmm. their physical, you know, what they're wearing, and being not being as confident as they can be because, you know, when they look in the mirror, they might not like the person in front of that. Mm. You know, what could you guys, as as powerful women, tell them at listening right now? It's hard, and I understand because I go through it every day. Like, every day you're going online and you're battling with, oh, why am I not this? Or am I not? Mm. Comparison is like the thief of joy all day every and this is this goes for men too you go online you see like this guy has all these girls or like you know i know a lot of guys for instance like following you know that influencer dan bilzerian or guys of that nature and i could see why guys are like wow this must be such an amazing fulfilling life but i would argue that if you look at the things that are actually in front of you right now like mm -hmm. this conversation that we're having or you go home and you actually have somebody that loves you whether that's one person two yeah. people five people that is joy. A bunch of people surrounded by you with all these things and people that say they like you. That's cool. That'll give you like a boost of, you know, whatever, like of happiness for that moment. But I think the longevity of happiness is seeing what you have and being like, wow, mm -hmm. this is amazing. This is dope. I'm thankful. I think if you have gratitude, you can't not be happy. But no matter what you have, that's why there's people in some of the worst you know, quote unquote, I don't want to say worse, but you know, places that would be considered really impoverished areas in the country, in the world. Yeah. And there's rich some of that, ha they're so yeah. rich in soul. They're rich in happiness. They're happiness. rich in happiness. So I think it just comes down to gratitude, yeah. you know? You may see social media, you may see the car, you know, popping bottles, mm -hmm. traveling, and all these other extra extravagant things that may look like success and happiness. But as I always say, how do you feel when you're in your room and no mm. one's around you? Mm. Or when you wake up in the morning, how is how is that feeling? Yeah. Are you struggling? Are you motivated? Are you thankful? And, like, you have to realize that a lot of these people that put all this out there, they're just doing it because they don't want you to know that, they're you know, struggling. they may be emptiness. Yeah. So for the people yeah. hearing this, you know, ask yourself those questions. Yeah. Having the nice car, having the nice clothes, traveling to the places with your friends and doing whatever you do for fun, are you genuinely happy in those moments? Or is it just a moment of of happiness? But when you yeah. go home, you know, you're just like, fuck, yeah. what am I doing? A hundred percent. And I do feel like social media for the, I, I mean, and I'm guilty of this. A big, a big part of it is just honestly putting on a show yeah. and you're just sitting there watching everybody's best show, best highlights. And you're yeah. just like looking at your own show and you're like, well, wait a minute, this is a shit show over here because yeah. let's be real, like we don't put the the, the ugly. dark moments, the ugly, ugly parts of yeah. our lives. Yeah. So when you're just consuming all these other people living their their best lives or whatever, yeah, you're going to sit there and be like, wow, like yeah. I need to get my shit together. I'm not skinny enough. I'm not fit enough. I'm not rich enough. I don't have enough girls or like whatever it might be. You yeah. know, I think what's also is wrong. It's like now, I, I don't know if you guys' parents are on social media. Oh, but yeah. once our parents get on social media and then they're like, oh, ira, la hija de quien sabe quien. Mm. Se, all, ya the se <laughs> all the time. Oh, all the time. All the And it's like. Oh, and that's, and that's something people throw in their girl. face. Like, yeah. I'm going to get there. Just yeah. give me a minute. All the time. No, no, no mira acá, uh, uh, Eduardo. Mira, ya se graduó. Mira, mira, ya se casó la, la Samantha. Yeah. Mira, ya <laughs> tiene tres hijos y está casada mm -hmm. y vive con su esposo. Yeah. ¿Qué hace? Uh, ¿Estoy de party? Ajá. Sí. ¿A qué hora llegaste esta noche? Mi hijo, mi hijo. Yes. Okay, I thought it was just me. No, nah, what did, hey, what did, no, what did they tell like, you? Wait a minute. Hey, ponte las pilas. Hey. Yeah. But it's like, dude, cuando, we're working hard, we're hustling, we're trying to figure it out, and it's like, because it, your parents are on this other realm yeah. of, like, social media, it's, ne it's never good enough. Yeah. It's just... Like, you're never going to be good enough now. The one thing I would, I would say is, my story is not your story, mm -hmm. and it's not, it doesn't have to be their story mm -hmm. if i'm happy that's me and yeah. if you're not happy with my story i'm sorry but i'm really not sorry because yeah. i want to live my life the way i wanted to and not on your terms i want to yeah. live it on my terms because then i don't want to grow up hating you mm -hmm. for it shit not working out mm -hmm. we're talking i was talking to becca earlier and throughout the week is just 
there's things that have to be said that have we've talked about as men because we've had some amazing men on, on the podcast talk about their story. We talk about ours. But, you know, there's also a lot of women out there that are going through life and they're they're putting their chin up, smile on their face, still get glamoured up. And they may look like they're beautiful, feeling sexy, feeling confident, but there's a fucking storm mm. in that background. The reason why I bring this up is because me and you got to talk throughout the week and the last two weeks. You know, you, you put on this amazing smile <laughs> and you show it on your on, for your followers for and everything. But, mm. you know, I, as tough as it sounds, I feel like your world that was was rocked mm -hmm. it was it was it was a little been a little cloudy yeah that the last couple of weeks last month how do you maneuver through tough times like that because it's not easy it's so I, I don't know if you want to touch up on that but um yeah it's 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 crazy so yeah i mean what we were talking about is we had two i mean two deaths in my family recently around the time where we were maybe wanting to like link up and so much was going on in my yeah. life you know when there's a death in the family everybody's Everything. world gets yeah. rocked i'm sorry yeah thank you um but in like those moments where you're kind of dealing with so much turmoil whatever it might be whether it is a death in the family or you losing your job or issues with your kids i mean there's so like yeah. life is so it's such a roller coaster. Like you never know what's going to get thrown at you. I think like in those moments, and I never had this before. And, but seriously, like the thing that has kept me recently just grounded and keep going honestly is God. And I'm going to tell you guys one thing right now is God was never part of my life. Like in that way, Catholic school, yeah. you guys heard like I went to Catholic school. People would say, Oh, I'm born again. I'm saved. Or, you know, God saved me or I feel him. You have to feel the Holy spirit fill you. And I'm like, what does that even mean? I don't feel yeah. it. I've never felt it. Like I'm just like, I don't, maybe it's just not meant for me or maybe it's not for me. And it wasn't until I want to say beginning of this year where I had just the craziest encounter where I would hear people say, talk about their encounters with God. And I'm like, Huh. I, I either I don't know if I fully believe it or maybe I do believe it and it's or true for you. you. Yeah, yeah. Or they're, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's how it felt for the longest time. And I, I wanted God to choose me, but I just didn't know how to go about it. And I, I want to say, yeah, like I, it was the end of last year, beginning of this year, I went running and I, I like going running at like, I don't know, like 5 a.m. in the morning, 6 a.m. Okay. in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I went running on the beach on the strand. Nobody was there. It was still black. You hear the waves, and I'm just, like, running. I'm listening to Drake, actually, Take Care or something like that. I'm listening to his old one of his old albums. <laughs> Hell, yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just, setting, I'm just <laughs> literally setting the, the tone. Yeah. I'm, like, over here, because, like, when I first start my run, I'm feeling good, so I'm listening to something a little bit more somber yeah. and, like, yeah, chill. Just in my vibe. And all of a sudden, like just this wave of like, I don't know how to describe it other than just like love, joy, happiness, but so overwhelming that I start crying. Like, and I, I, like, again, I've been to church. I've never lifted my hands up to pray, but here I am, right? Like in the middle of the beach by myself running and my eyes are like closed and I'm like, my hands just like lift up and I'm like, thank you, God. Thank you, God. I start crying. I like fall to my knees and I'm like, oh my gosh, like God, like I don't know where this is coming from, but I'm feeling him so intensely in my life. Mind you, like 2020 was a year of where I was, I felt so lost. Like I was mm. honestly like I, and I, really this is only things I like open up to like my close friends about, but like I was, you know, drinking a lot. I was like in a really toxic relationship. I had just lost my dream job, which was being on air at Kelly 93.9, which is a radio reggaeton station out here due to COVID. They were making big cuts in radio. So I was super lost. So for like a couple of years after COVID, even I was still lost. Like I was doing all these things, you know, I was, you know, managing, having this incredible career and I was doing everything great. But in my like off time or personal time, I felt angry, lost, sad. I kept going back to like this kind of toxic relationship type thing. And yeah. I don't even think I was looking for God, but obviously I was looking for something, something to make me stop feeling so depressed and anxious. Like sometimes I couldn't even get out my bed or go to like social events that I had to do. I would just feel so like socially anxious and just like not in my right state of mind at all. So it's like God found me. How do you put on that face, though? How do you put on that smile 
when you go with your how family. You still pull up to these events, yeah, like how do you? Still, yeah, how do you still maneuver around. like nothing's wrong, but yet yeah. your fucking world is crashing down? Yeah. How do you? How how does that work? What do you? What goes on mentally and emotionally for yourself that you know? If without you telling any us what you're going through and everybody, <clears throat> we're like ah, oh, she's good. Look look at her. She has a dream. She has a job. Yeah. She looks good. She's. Making everybody happy. Dope job. She yeah. has all the nice things. I'm Every, all that she's perfect. I wish I was her. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't like nobody is perfect. And again, like on the internet, like people will really only put out maybe things they want you to to see. And oh, I've always been super transparent about my depression and anxiety that I've dealt with literally since I was like a little girl. I talk mm -hmm. about it and have talked about it my entire time being on social media. I'm not scared of telling people that. But ways the ways that I was maybe coping with it sometimes aren't the most. Hey guys, like today I just really drank a lot like at this party <laughs> because I was so anxious. Yeah. It's not exactly like. Like the easiest thing to tell people so yeah. um I a lot of the times I would just suck it up and I could put on just like a good face for a couple hours and I would just tell myself okay this is going to be done soon yeah. I know you don't really want to be here your soul doesn't want to be here your spirit doesn't want to be here but you know it's for work so you know and I'd like seeing people I feed off people's energy but sometimes I would just be like I need to take a shot before going right now or I need to you know do something to like numb myself a little bit um, so that's, I mean, yeah, there's been times where I've dealt with it in unhealthy ways. Other times that I've dealt with it in healthy ways. It just depended where I was in my life. So when honestly. you got, when you had this moment at the beach, what's that sense of uh, sanity? What do you feel? When I, when I yeah. had that, I knew it was God. There was no, nothing else it could have been, honestly, because. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you explain, how do you explain the feeling? So when <clears throat> right now, there, one thing with me and my team, I'm very, how, how you are, very transparent. So when I'm not feeling good, I, just, I, I gotta say them like they they know like I'll get quiet, I won't say a word, or I'll just be like, yeah, it's cool. And again, recently, not like kind of similar to what you, what happened to you at the beach, but I just had it at the gym like I went in the morning, and again like my this is my brother right here, Dylan, and um, damn it, the, the whole shit I have shit sleep right, and that, I know that's too, yeah. that's a whole other thing, yeah. but. We're on the way on the way to the house, and I think it was like 12. It was already almost 12, and I'm, like, falling asleep while driving. He's like, hey, you good? And I was like, nah, bro. Like, I really want to go home and sleep. Like, yeah, I'm just tired, dog. He was like, all right, cool, cool. So gym for an hour and, then, you know, workout, sauna in an hour? I didn't even say a word. I just said, all right, bro, cool. Let's drink a little bit more caffeine. We get there, and... I kid you not, and I'm not ashamed to, to say it. I'm not ashamed to talk about it because I walk in there and I'm listening to Ocean's Hill song. Oh, my gosh. That's what I was and, getting and, to on the way here. Yeah. That's what I was listening to literally when I was pulling up to this podcast. That's crazy. Yeah, and oh I walk God. in there and I'm just listening to that. And then we start working out. We're talking here and there. And then all of a sudden, like, I just put on Refiner. And then that song, Refiner, like, I just... It's just hitting, and I start like getting watery. I'm just walking around, pacing back and forth. And mind you, we're we're benching, like we're bench pressing as any other guy does on <laughs> any day of the gym, right? Like we're just that's the thing. And big boy section, yeah, big boy section. And I'm like, again, I'm I'm big, so like my we're at 315, and like I'm repping, and in the middle of the second rep, my eyes just start fucking watering. And I'm like, fuck, here we go, bro. Like, keep going. And then we get to 365. And before I hit that, like, I pick it up. It's already in my hands. And then instead of, like, I could see the bar. And before I even go, like, everything just goes blurry because they start crying. And then, boom, hit it. And then Dylan doesn't say a word. He knows when I go through it, he won't say a word to me. But he just, hey, bro, dazz me up. So we work out for a couple more. Went to the sauna. This is a thing where I knew it, it was it was time. Like, this is where I knew, hey, this is where I need to make my change because nothing else is helping me no more. Nothing else is saving me. No techno music, no rap music, no one, nothing. Mm. Nobody can tell me anything that's not helping me anymore. We get to the sauna, and again, in the sauna, if you're in there, by the 15, 20 minute mark, you're you like get out. panicking. You're like, yeah, gotta you're like get claustrophobic. <laughs> yeah. claustrophobia. Just get like, you yeah. gotta get the fuck out. Mm. And you're in there. I just put on Refiner one more time. And I listen. It's like a six-minute song. And then by the end of it, 
I close my eyes, how you did, and I just start praying. Mm. I'm like, God, I know what you're doing. I know I'm going somewhere. It's not clear to me just yet, but I trust you, and I put everything into it. I love you so much. Thank you for putting me in these positions. God, thank you so much. Keep everybody healthy, my family, my sister, my brother, my brother-in-law, my nieces, my son, my daughter, my baby mama. Like, put everybody in that right path. Protect them. And then if you have a little bit more, protect me too. Thank you. I love you. And then finished. And they're like, all right, cool, bro. Wow. And, it, and, and it's been a good change. And with the good change, we've had it's just a, it's just like anything yeah. else. A ripple effect of good. Yeah, there, there's oh, the picture. <laughs> there's a. Wow. Good yep. moment. Yeah, I just put my hands up. I just, I had to, had to surrender. Moment. Surrender. <laughs> I think that's like, yeah. the, I think you just summarize it in the best way. I finally surrendered all the pain, the pressure that we feel as women, as people of this universe, as like people on social media, just all that baggage and pain, you just surrender it to God. And it is the most liberating feeling ever because when you're carrying that you're trying to carry yeah. all that like all the people depending on you girl all the responsibilities all your work your bills Everything. it's like if you're just like god i give it to you and then in turn ask god how can you use me now to do your ministry because i also believe that we can't just take 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 from god it's like yeah. how mm -hmm. are you going to use me today and now yeah. i used to wake up and it used to be god you know i need this it's like a, you know it's like this is what i want and this is what i need now it's like okay god how can i honor you and by honoring you you're going to put me in the no matter yeah. what you're going to put me in the path right. you're going to put the right people in my life you're going to make my heart Definitely. change my soul change you tell you ask <laughs> but when you ask you got to give them something back right and people think because you I, like, I think you ask, but you offer as well. Right? Yeah, you like, ask. It's because like, whatever, but you're like, but I'm here, so use like, me for. Yeah. I mean, if we think about it, and and we've never been this type of, we've never done this really type of show, but it's very much needed. Um, but it's just when do we ask for God? When do we ask? When we need the higher when, power like, in our desperate moments. In our most desperate moments, when we need it, when something's going bad, mm -hmm. please, bro, please just help me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's like, is that coming from the right intentions? Mm -hmm. And like I tell everybody right now, what's happening? It's because we are asking, but I know you're only going to give it when I do my part yeah. yes. and I need to do my part. So I have to be that that channel. I have to be whatever you're putting down in the mess. I know I've had to tell Steve Harvey said it. Never be ashamed to pray. Mm. Never be ashamed to pray. No matter who you're around, no matter where you're at, never be ashamed. And no matter how many people honestly tear you down for it because yeah. I do feel like I don't know weirdly recently there's been kind of a shift and you know it is it's it's been weird sometimes even posting about God because I've even had like some friends of mine or people that I know that get even upset at that yeah. and I understand that there is you know there's tensions when when it comes to religion church yeah. faith different beliefs yeah, a lot systems. of shit happening definitely you know a lot, and I and I totally understand that I think for me it's like well God has worked miracles in my life. The only thing I ever want to preach is like, if you if you allow God to come in your life, mm -hmm. just see how much like your addictions will disappear, your your anger, the way that you even like speak to your mom will change, <laughs> the way that you speak to your friends or your family yeah. or to yourself, your internal yeah. dialogue yeah. changes. And that's like mm -hmm. my only message for anybody is like, you know, I understand that people are flawed and sometimes the people, the representatives of Christ have been flawed in the past. Mm -hmm. They've committed yeah. horrible, heinous things. They still do. But we need to remember that our relationship was with God, yeah. not, not with, with these people, not with the people that mm -hmm. quote unquote represent God. Yeah. You know, I think like when you're just transparent on what you're going through, it doesn't just add your confidence and power to your it empowers you. It, it also lets people understand where you're coming from. And then they're going to make that judgment. Oh, yeah. Either they want to be around you and, you know, they want to, I don't, you can't really have them support you because it's your own journey, but they can try to understand you or they're just going to neglect that mm. type and of energy. I also think that like when you're on that journey, right, with God, you don't need anybody to support you. No. Because it's just you and him. That's all you need, honestly. Yeah, yeah, like you're, yeah. it's just you guys. 
whoever yeah. comes comes and whoever doesn't it's, yeah it's, everybody's and, and it's, yeah. it's like no hard feelings like i'm not gonna get mad at you because for the yeah. longest time you remember we used to always say like the higher power yeah we used to always be like you know the higher power this you know because the almighty yeah thank god's a higher power I, I think we were all like in a different time of our lives where yeah, we were like for sure we don't know who's up Right. Who's I would always there, say basically. I'm living in a simulation. Like yeah. I would say that yeah. all the time. Now yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. So. I, I did want to ask, yeah. like, when you're going through this whole change, was there a quote or something that you had, re- like, a reminder daily that just kept you going in a sense, or something that you heard that just kind of made a stamp in your mind? Um, I'm not sure if there was like anything in particular, but I did read one this morning that was like, God works in the darkness, which Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree with more because if you think about like, even who like Jesus would hang out with, it would be the people that society deemed the worst, right? Like the people that were in their darkness, right? In their, you know, whatever it might be. So I feel like God will reach out to you when, when you are sometimes in your lowest moment. And the thing about, and I love what you said earlier when you said, it's okay if people don't approve because truthfully, like all you really need is God. And that's so true because mm-hmm. if you really think about it, you guys, like if you're going through life and you are living because you want this person's approval, that person's oh, approval, no. well, people are finicky. People change yeah. their opinions all the time. Sometimes people are going to like you. People are going through their own stuff. Yeah. So if you are reliant on the emotions and feelings of other people, and that's what you're getting your self-esteem from, your self-worth, your happiness from, you're never going to be happy. You're never going to be fulfilled. But God is a constant. So if people don't like that, maybe I talk about God, or, you know, if we pray outwardly, that's completely fine, you know, because God... knowing he's there in my corner, you get so much strength. Like anytime I post even something a little bit controversial on my stories, I pray about it. And I'm like, God, if I have you, it's okay. If people want to come for me and, you know, judge me for it, that's completely fine. Cause you have God and he's never going to be finicky with you. He's going to be so solid in your life every single time. When we, when we go through changes when we go through chapters in our life, I love to call them chapters. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're going to go through everything, the loss, the gaining, <clears throat> feelings, emotions, and <clears throat> that's what happens when you go through a significant change like that is when you really know when, like, you really get tested. Like, yes. hey, you know what? Today I'm going to make this change. And who and who knew that a day later, two days later, boom, get tested. Tested. Right. Yeah, you get yes. super tested. And oh, I got so I, literally with, with Dylan a couple of days ago, Three in the morning, bro, like, I'm driving to him, and I'm telling him, like, bro, with, with God, we will never lose. This is, it's going to be okay. And yes. it's just, it's so steams where you you can't really put it into context for someone to understand. It's not that they can't understand. It's that they're not ready for it. Yeah. They're not ready. For and, so long, I wasn't ready. So yeah. I understand and that I've, feeling. Like, I've told my friend, one of my friends, and like, oh, dude, like, well, this, I was like, hey, listen to this song. 10 like eight hours later i check in i was like hey did you listen to the song no i wasn't like i yeah. didn't have time like mm. i just know i gotta i gotta sit with it and blah mm. blah blah and i'm like when you're ready when you're ready yeah when you're ready when you're ready you have to be yeah. ready that's yeah. what i thought because my mom for the longest time my whole entire life mija del rosario mija de misa mija misa <laughs> misa misa like god like she'd you know and I'd just be like, okay, mom, like I wasn't ready to receive the God's love exactly. until until you actually decide to do and you're everything. Take it everything a step changes. further. When someone tells us we need to receive it, we're you not going to listen. It has to be like a natural thing. It has to just come. It has to come through here. Yeah. You have to genuinely yeah. Yeah. want it. Yeah. You have to ha- want a relationship with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has, to, it has to come through here. And like I told my mom, and like I, even talking with, with Peppa and Dylan, I'm like, I knew I needed to make this change and as much as my parents told me and anybody else told me, I didn't want to because now I'm doing it because your time. I wanted to do it on my terms. Yeah. Why are you so into it? What's because it's on me now. Like mm-hmm. my back is against the wall. Only way I can go is either forward or give up. Mm-hmm. And I'm not giving up, so I got to go forward. So in order for me to go forward mm-hmm. and progress, I got to let go of a lot of baggage that I'm having. Yeah. And I gotta yeah. let it go right now. And give it to somebody that can handle it. Yeah, oh, and yeah. just throw it out there. I like I can't, mm-hmm. I can't, I can't feed into this. I can't try to fit your perfect picture. I mm-hmm. can't try to be there whenever you. I, how can I be there for you when I'm not even there for me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it turned into like, that. To, like it goes back to like <clears throat> filling up the cups. It yeah, it turned right. into that. Yeah, there was a hole at that bottom of the cup. Mm-hmm. I kept putting. Mm-hmm. No, nothing was going nowhere. I relate to that so much. I, I feel like I've been that for like ten years. It didn't matter if we tried filling. 
of yeah. your cup, it was never going to get filled. It was never no. going to get no filled. No matter what. No, 100%. Yeah. And people say, or not people, I've, I actually did read this quote and it was like, you ask God for patience, he's going to test your patience. Yeah. You ask God to be, you know, more, um, I don't know, like less, you know, fall into less temptation. He's going to throw things that are going to tempt you. Yeah. So he's going to, you know, put things in your path that are going to, you know, if you really want something, you say you really want to be these things, he's going to test you yeah. to, to see if this is what you truly want to be. So if you're in a place where you're like, oh, I really want to stop drinking or I really want to, I don't know, um, be kinder to my friends or family, he's going to test you in that way to see, okay, you're asking me of these things, but do you really want them? Like, here you go. Like, I'm going to put this in your path and let's see if you're really going to do it, you know? Yeah, we, and I made that change the last 30 days when I'm 40 and I'm going for another 45. And how I tell everybody, it's like, this doesn't happen just because, because we work so hard. This happens because the power above decided to bless us because we're doing the work that was needed. And now he's, you're ready for it. Mm -hmm. I wanted, I wanted now. this back then months ago, mm -hmm. but I wasn't ready. Yeah. So I can't complain. Like, why didn't I get the fame opportunities back then? I just, I, you he, it. yeah, he knew I wasn't ready to handle it. Yeah. And now where we're at, all right, cool. Let's take it one step yeah. at a time. Oh yeah. And so yeah. it's God's protecting you. Yeah. Like a lot of the times the no's you get in your life, that is a protection because the enemy is going to give you the quick, easy, <laughs> quick gratification, you know, all the things the enemy lies. A lot. It's going to lie and say, Jess, the more followers you have, you are going to be so much happier, girl. Mm. You have all this money, girl. You're going to be so happy. And then you get these things and it's like, it's never enough. You ever notice the more you get, sometimes the more you want, think about it. There's somebody on the street that would kill to just have air conditioning right now. And we're just chilling in here. Right. And we're like, dang, like, this is cool. Imagine if we were in a mansion, people that are in a mansion. Yeah. Imagine if I had a helicopter pad on top. Yeah. It's like us humans, unfortunately, like we are greedy and by nature, you, you have something you want more, right? You, you, it's never enough. So that's why it goes back to the whole conversation of whatever you have now, what, even if you think it's not what other people are so thankful. Yeah. You you have to thankful have to being be being in your bed yeah having having blankets mm -hmm. having water having yeah. food having the option to hey this today i want to go eat this mm -hmm. today i want to go here yeah. i'm craving this let me go get it not many have that option so it's just even the food the shoes on our feet mm -hmm. clothes yeah. on our back and not understanding the that blessing that we had since so young yeah. and not and what it took to get there so what it took to get there yeah. and it's harder to do by the way day because yeah. day, i, I catch yeah. myself in traffic and i'm like complaining and somebody annoys me online i'm like complaining so yeah. it is yeah. harder Harvey. to actually like, i'm like i'm like get out the road no but like i understand like in person it's so much harder to actually do it so you it's a process and you have yeah. to remind well, yourself of that. yeah it's not easy though trust me <laughs> we're we put up the not gonna lie questions out there and for, like I was telling Jess last time, some for some reason when we put up the not gonna lie ones, we don't know who sent it. So the and anonymous yeah, ones. so the anonymous ones, so they get confident. They 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 say it the way it needs to be, oh my and gosh. they so they're okay. out there, right? Okay. And thanks to our our lovely second family subscribers, followers, and people that follow us on, on all platforms, you guys ask some questions. And today we have Mr. Dylan on the mic, Yay. just behind the scenes today, asking those questions. So. Let's throw the first one, big guy. So the first question is, have you ever cried at school? At school? Cried at school? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think She's it's like, very yes. clear. Damn, that yeah, 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 I did. I've even eaten in like, in like you know how like in movies you see like a kid eating like in the bathroom? I've done that. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Not going to lie. Cue, cue the sad music right <laughs> now. I know. Where's my little violin? <laughs> I'm like, where's there my little is. violin? Uh, we're we're going to have to ask that question one more time. Hold <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't go through. It didn't go through. <laughs> I think it glitched or some shit, but it didn't go through. Let me ask that question one more time. Sorry. Okay. So it's, you can talk about it. You can talk about it. You can, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, okay. So it's, have you ever cried at school? Yes. That's the question. That's, okay. that's a definite 100% yes. Shit, without thinking about it, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the only time I ever cried at school is when my girlfriend broke up with me. Aww. I still cry at school, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, just yesterday. I'm like sitting there and I'm like... Have you ever ate in the stall, though, for lunch? Yes. At the restaurant? Hell no, bro. I was at the cool kids. <laughs> You're like, not I'm, me. Can't I was relate. at the athletes, bro. I wasn't allowed to take my lunch out of the cafeteria, so. <laughs> oh, my God. Sit back down. I had to sit there, like, oh, okay. you know, in my 
Yeah. In your little area. Yes. No, I for sure ate in the bathroom stall probably a couple times. Yeah. So not, not too yeah, long ago. Good times. Um, I need my little vibe. I was in my room watching Mean Girls with someone that has not watched Mean Girls. And um, I was like, you know how she eats? Lindsay Lohan eats in the, yes. in the stall. Yeah. When I saw that, I'm like, Dude, I feel you, girl. I was just laughing. I was <laughs> like, like who the hell eats in the stall like for lunch and this and that? And she started crying. She's like, me? I've eaten in the stall before. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. not going to lie. Love, it, it goes we're back to proving, right proving my point of girls may go through a tough, like, us as guys, when we get tested by another by another guy, by another man, mm-hmm. what's the first thing we ever do? Hey, well, fuck that. Fool. I'm going to go get yeah. down. Physical. Physical right away. Yes. But then there's those those guys, there's those men that are not, they're not like that. They're, I'm not going to be in, a, in an altercation because mm-hmm. I can't. One, maybe they can't fight. Two, maybe not have the confidence. And then you see those videos all over social media of, the bully, uh, the guy getting bullied stands up to his bully and knocks his shit out. Yeah, yeah. But girls go through a different type of... It's a get, different type of aggression. I yeah, a different say. type of bullying where it's like the words are coming out of the other person's mouth, but it's not just one person. They get their whole posse oh, to it's agree. Gossip. Yes. It's, it's like you tear down reputation. So, And actually, one of like my favorite like psychologists talked about this. This isn't everybody, okay? I know there's girls out there that fight. I know that, you know, there's guys out there that like to gossip, but for the, you know, the most part, guys, the way that they express aggression is through physical fight. It's like, you know what, we're going to go out, meet me outside type thing. And for the most part, girls, the way that we show aggressive isn't like, I'm a slap her and pull her hair it's mm-hmm. more like which does happen but it's more like okay i'm gonna gossip or i'm gonna tear down their character it's a lot of verbal mm-hmm. abuse yeah. that I, I would say and that that hurts too like oh, yeah. i know i'm not getting like my hair snatched but you know like <laughs> it, that hurts when I girls talk also, about you like it probably even hurts more right because it messes with everything in your yeah. life like if you're in high school like a group of girls are talking shit about you they're Going to tear yeah. you down. But, it, you but down. It, even take it a step further, even as adults. Oh, yeah. That's those mitoteros, those mm-hmm. mitoteras, and Your those bodies. Like, you walk in and like, hmm, mira esa. Yeah, yeah, it mm-hmm. hurts, it mira, hurts. Esa tenía no, y ahora yo no tiene por qué. Mm-hmm. And it's so much shit that happens. And low-key be your own family sometimes. Oh, mm. 100%. Those Christmas dinners. Yeah, the tias, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was that? There was like a video of like, mija, ¿tú no te casas? Tú ya te casaste tres veces, ¿para qué me hablas? Uh-huh. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But it's facts. <laughs> it's facts. Fíjate, That's ¿por qué facts. no tienes hijos? ¿Por qué tienes diez? Y de diferente papá. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> no, I know oh, it's no. literally like No, that. it's yeah, because, yeah. Like, if, like, think about it. Like, our mm. parents, they, they try to one-up their brother, sister, oh, or yeah. primos of, like, Basically, With their kids too. Sometimes. Yeah, like, like basically, oh, yeah. my yeah, yeah my you know I mean? <laughs> mi hijo se graduó. Pues mi hijo ya tiene trabajo y, y es manager. ¿De dónde? McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> but like they try to one up you, right? Yeah, they yeah. every they try to one up them. So now they're in a competition of trying to prove that they. First of all, they were, being a manager at McDonald's, I've never worked there, but I'm pretty sure it's a hard ass job because yeah. like let me see, they first be off. dealing huh? with they be dealing with hella people. My like, guy, uh, my guy over there was. I bet. Lava was slanging burgers. No. You want I one? Even you want like managing yeah. any any type of business, especially one that where the ice cream machine don't work all the time. <laughs> it's like oh, the yeah, longest no. yard. <laughs> Got the fries that will cross oh, your eyes. Man. But it, it's I just know. again like our families, even since. We were little, mm-hmm. try to one up them. So now we have a something to live up to. And if you don't live up to it, you're a disappointment. Yeah. No, la cagaste. Yeah. Honestly. It's like, hey, relax. Yeah, relax. <laughs> relax. Hey, take a chill pill. Take it easy. Y'all ready for <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> Send me a piece of that comfort later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, y'all ready for the next question? No. I know you're not. Okay. Try it. Um, so it says, How are you doing mentally? Oh, let's start. Do we do like a scale? One to From ten. One to ten. One to ten. You can go first. Okay. Negative Ooh, numbers mentally. count. <laughs> Negative numbers. <laughs> Negative numbers count. <laughs> mentally, right now, I'm probably like at a just overall, probably like at a six point five or seven. I don't know, like how, like one being like what, like one being one so being rock bottom the, yeah. worst. Rock bottom. Okay, yeah. I'm probably at like a seven point five. Okay. Yeah. So actually, eight. When we explain. One to ten, especially a mental check-in like that, it's one is like you're done. Like, you're, 
done. That's like it. Flatline, basically. You're, that, okay. Yeah, you're flatlined. Okay, and 10 okay. being perfect, you're happy, you got everything you ever wanted, yeah. everything. I think right now I'm probably, okay, it's like seven would probably be like fair. Maybe 6.9. 6.9.5. I'm probably like a little under seven, but we'll, we'll round up. Hell <laughs> Say <yeah>. seven. <laughs> um, probably like a seven, too. I I mean, yeah, probably a seven. I think I would be, right now, probably a six. You're at a six. Yeah. But it's, it's going through all these yeah. changes. Like, I was talking to Pepe uh, yesterday, and even today, it's like, damn, bro, like, temptation, mm. you know, what are you doing today for I'm home? What are you, what? Really? I was like, yeah, bro. Like, I'm really trying to do my part. Mm-hmm. Like, going through the changes, and I have to do it at whatever cost it is. Like, is it boring to other people? Mm-hmm. But to me, it's like, this I'm, is peace. I'm, part of yeah, your journey. this is good. This yeah. Is okay, that's yeah. crazy, because I went through the same thing last night. I had, like, two different groups of friends that were, you know, they were going to go out, and they were going to have fun, and I love going out and stuff. But I was like, I need to just not yeah. right now. Like, I just need to, like, be in my zone. Mm. And on top of that, like, it was a heavy day yesterday. I went to, like, a, a protest type thing, and I got kind of, like, really good feedback and then some other negative. I don't know. It's yeah. <laughs> Social media in general is just, yeah. it can make you go from a 10 real quick to just kind of plummet you a little yeah. bit. But I've, again, like, you... I've been trying to get, like, a really tougher skin and not mm-hmm. shy away from, like, speaking uh, about things you really believe about yeah. because we live in a country where we're able to do that. I'm passionate mm-hmm. about that, and I hate that sometimes people feel silent. So I always want to push myself outside my comfort zone Ooh. to show people if you don't believe something or you something's rubbing you the wrong way, wrong way and you want to express it, express yeah. it. You cannot all be silenced, I'm, you know? I'm going to say it as, as best as I can. Who gives a flying fuck how everybody else feels yep. if they don't agree with how you feel? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they're not in your shoes. They don't wear the clothes on your back. They're not in the position you're in. And they don't live your life. They don't. So but they're also not on your journey. They're, they're not, not. On so your journey. It's just you. No, definitely. You're on your own yeah. journey. The only person, when you when you go to DMV, when you go anywhere to sign your name, you sign your name only. Oh, yeah. You don't sign anybody else's name. And that's how I feel about the end of my life. It's not going to be anybody else there looking at God in the, in the eyes. I'm, it's going to be me and him, and I'm going to have to answer to everything that I did. Yeah. It's just you and the big guy. So all the people you were scared about or all the people that tempted you to do things that maybe went against your morals or your values or yeah. just things that make your soul feel icky, all these people are cheering you on now, but what happens when it's just you and it's going to be the craziest And moment? it goes to a, com- a confidence level, right, where look at everybody that has ever brought you down and put you down. And now you're living a more fulfilled life and you're living your journey and you're being true to yourself. Who is living a better life now? Who is now progressing and elevating daily, weekly, monthly, yearly? Who's at peace? Who's at peace? You get yeah. to a certain position where like, damn, why is he so happy? Mm-hmm. Well, because I just walked through the fucking storm for the last 10 years. Storm. And I did it and I made it. But because you want to be, that's on you. Whatever you're going through, whatever storm you're going, you got to do that shit on your own. Yep. I can't help you if you don't want to be helped. So it's on me to help me. Mm-hmm. It gets lonely. Fuck yeah. All it's this shit gets so lonely. lonely. It gets so lonely. As much as everybody's going to help you, yeah, they could say it and they can be there. But the only you person that has to walk that road, that that lonely ass road right there that's pitch black mm-hmm. is you. Mm-hmm. Is you. It Nobody is else. so lonely though. So if you are on that journey and you're listening to this because there's... I mean, I would argue like almost everybody's on that journey. Nobody wants to stay depressed or anxious or living in a state of confusion. Like nobody wants that. And I think for the most part, that's like a huge part of the human experience. If you are going through that, it will be lonely. Like I have recently in the past like two months been feeling honestly just really isolated. Like Mm -hmm. in general, not not because my friends are isolating me. It's more like I've been isolating myself because sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I read something that was like sometimes God needs to isolate you because he needs to talk to you. He needs to just talk to you and then you're going to be isolated and then he's going to fill your life with the things that are better suiting you, the people that are better suiting you, the people that actually want to see better for you, but he needs to remove you. And I feel like I'm going through that process right now where I'm like, oh my God, so much of my world is shifting and my, my thoughts are changing and the people and the things I want to be around are changing. And it's hard. Like you're sitting in bed alone at night and you're just like, wow, I am so alone. But that's, it gives you that time to talk to God and be like, I don't know what is happening, God, but lead me 
put the right people in my path, put the right opportunities in my path, you know? But it is hard. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm like at a seven <laughs> or a 6.9. We're, you know? we're getting there. It's, it's not easy for sure. It's not. Where you at, big guy? What's the next one? All right, next question. It says, what should you do when you find yourself in a place in life where you just want to give up and say everyone else was right? Damn. You want to give up and say, oh, that happens all the time, huh? I can name a couple instances where that's happened in my life. Talk about it. Just in general, like my parents, like they'll always say, you should have done that or you should have done this. It's, I think parents are like a big proponent of that for sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's like a cultural thing, but they always want to be like, I told you you shouldn't have gone in that industry. You should have just been a teacher. You should have just something safe. Because I would say like my industry, there's no, I, I can have a job today and not a job. I mean, I guess I could go for any industry, right? But uh, I guess as opposed to something where you have like a solid paycheck, mine's yeah. not solid all the time. Like some months I'm getting paid and other months I'm not. So that scares them. So my mom and my parents are like, are you sure? Are you happy you went that path? So I think for like 10 years, I was like battling at home. My mom and my dad, they were supportive, but they weren't like always the happiest mm -hmm. for me because of the job that I was yeah. doing, you know? Um, so I would say like that for sure was hard. It was like trying to prove to my parents that radio is cool. Music is cool. Entertainment is cool. Yeah. I'm happy. I know I'm not like a doctor like my brother or whatever, but... Um, but yeah, I, of course I wanted to give up. Yeah. Hey, I think that's, yeah. I don't know. Cause like for me, like c career wise, I guess, um, like I, I never knew I wanted to be in the medical field, but I'm in it now. But now it's like my parents from a long time ago would be like, get into it, get into it, get into it. Like, you'll be good. Right. But for like, I don't know, maybe like at least like five or six years, I didn't, I was not in the medical field, but now my parents. Like, now that I am in it, <clears throat> my parents are like, see, <clears throat> you should have done it earlier. You would have been Ahead. in this step instead of the step that you're at now. Yeah. So it's kind of like, do you want to just give up and be like, no, you're right? For me, like, I don't. Like, I'm, I'm always like, no, like, you're not right. Like, I'm in the place I'm supposed to be in mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. If I would have been at this moment, that, like, back then, like, I probably would not have made it. I was way too young. Yeah. I was way too crazy. I was wanting to party. Like, me having my current career path right out of high school, I, I would have failed, like, yeah. horribly. Yeah. So, no, like, I, I'm not, like, I'm not going to be, like, I'm not going to sit here and be, like, yeah, you're right. I should have listened to you. And, like, no. It all came to me when it was supposed to come to me. And I'm, like, crossing my fingers. <laughs> trying to be su like succeed in it you right will. now because yeah. I'm like in the process of the testing or whatever but you will yeah um yeah if I would have done it years ago I would not have made it 100% so no I don't think like I would have been like oh no you're right well, yeah what was it gonna do what was the question? question yeah so what do you do is the question uh what should you do when you find yourself in a place in life where you just want to give up and say everyone was right I think you don't. You don't give up. Yeah. Okay. Because it's you're in your own path. Only you know what's right for you. Yeah. Like your body, your energy will like take in and give out what's needed. Absolutely. If somebody's like trying to feed you something, like it's just not going to work out. It's n it's not going to work out in your best interest. It's going to it's it's just going to be negative towards you. You're not, it's not going to be within, it's not going to be coming out of you. It's going to be coming because somebody's like, oh, do this, do that. You know, yeah, you're in your own path. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. You, I think you get, you just keep going. You, you get tested in, in that form of wanting to give up in your journey because the journey is, is trying to test you. Like, is this for you? Mm -hmm. So you're probably going to have a lot more moments of, quitting because yeah. they get tough your payback isn't what you anticipated mm. or what you expected within the time frame you anticipate mm. but and the thing when the thing about your journey is there's no time frame yeah you know the yeah. thing about your calling is there's no time frame mm -hmm. it could be right now that you get the payback or it could be in three four years for example like you right now with the podcast we we had we had like, more this is your prime time we have more moments of damn we should quit Damn, it's not. Uh, it's, it's not hitting. It's, it's not, not hitting. It's not touching people's hearts yeah. yet. Just yet. And then we got greedy because we're like, 
what's success? Oh, you need to have these numbers and mm. you have these many people, so and so followers. And just said it the other day. There's people that have came into this type of industry and given up between episode 10, episode 11. Mm-hmm. We're at 114. This was, yeah. this was a marathon, bro. Uh, I was going to clap. Yeah. This was, this was, this was a marathon. You may have more money and more experience and more resources, but we build it from the ground up, from the gutter. That's rewarding. And, and it's, that means our foundation, when no one remembers, like your foundation has to be solid. Rock if your fun foundation is not solid, that's just going to break whenever there's a storm. And we've had storms. Not even a storm, just a hiccup. Yeah, we had Some hiccups. Some people just give up because yeah. their camera is dead, so they're just not going to record today. Or, oh, we didn't get a guest today. Yeah. Oh, well, this video didn't. Hey, we used to imagine, fuck, if I can reach 10 people, I'll change the world. Yeah. And when we didn't get 1,000 and we got mad, well, shit, we got 999. Hey. Don't, be, don't be greedy, bro. You're getting what, you're getting what you need. And that goes back to the whole thing of you have, you get a little bit and you want more and more. And that's why it's like, whatever you have in this moment, yeah. y'all like bask in it. Like it's dope. Take it back. Yeah. All right, Dill. Hit us with the next question, brother. Um, this is kind of, this is, this is good. This is, it hit us. It says, how do you know that you are the one? Ooh. Ooh. Hold on. First off, who's, is anybody married here? No. No? Single, single, single? Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> like single, single, single. I mean, listen. Are you married? No, I'm single. Taken? Single. 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 Like a Pringle? Single like a Pringle. Well, I'm on the apps, but. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I'm on the apps or whatever. It's always interesting because I actually changed Christian my. Christian Mingle? <laughs> Wait, hold on. This is actually really She's funny. Like downloaded, up. having created a profile. This is actually kind of funny because we're up because I did actually think about downloading Christian Mingle because I couldn't now like see myself um, being with someone that at least isn't open to the idea of God because I don't know at the end of the day like I want to make it to God and your life partner is either going to help you achieve that ultimate goal or try to prevent you and like you can give me a house and kids and all these things but if the ultimate goal isn't that because this life you guys goes by like this like one yeah. day we're going to be old wrinkly and we're going to be like oh my gosh now what you start like questioning your whole entire life Facts. i want somebody that's going to help me at least feel peace in those last moments and get me the you know the big guy <laughs> so yeah I, I was thinking about going on christian mingle but i haven't yet i'm just on bumble and hinge for now but i'm christian very mingle. i'm very intentional on my profile though i'm very like this is what I'm, I'm looking for. I love. <laughs> so I love a screenshot of it. Yeah. So what did, okay. Wait, what does it say? What, is, what, is, what does it say? I love hikes. I love long walks on the beach. I love God. Uh, yeah. Wait, and it's funny though because I like. I'm really into cowboys. Like that's my type. So I actually uh-huh. changed my settings to travel mode, and I'm currently in Montana, guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah so she's baby. not here right now. I am she's currently in Montana. Not in LA. No, I'm in Montana at the moment. The Yellowstone. 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 Get me a little she Yellowstone like cowboy. Jeffree Star. <laughs> I imagine him. I imagine. Shit. So yeah. how do you know when he's the one? Oh, my gosh. Well, that's number one. I think what I spoke about is <laughs> if this is person that's going to push me spiritually. That's number one. If you have a good spiritual base in your home, then in in. And like, okay, I never thought like this before either until my mother bought me a book called Dating as a Christian in a Godless World or something like that. I'm like, I'm not reading this until I read it. And then I think the only... (laughs) She's like, now I recommend it to everyone. Now I'm like, listen, even if you're not, you know. But anyway, so I think one of the things that really stood out to me the most was that like if you have a man in your life that is so spiritually yoked and he is such a believer in being a good person and and being a follower of God like think about it girl like he is going to question anytime he's going to do anything questionable anytime he's getting tempted by you know girls or whatever going out if he is so in tuned and if you guys as men are dating a woman that is so in tuned with her morals her values her spirituality she puts God number one even above you you're going to have so much trust in this person because you know they're not just answering to you. They're answering to somebody that means even more to them that they're scared of. Like now, yeah. even even now, like all, I used to do things that were sinful and I didn't really think twice about it, like mm-hmm. maybe gossip or whatever it might be. Now it's like I think a little bit more about my actions. So if, that's like 
I think for me, if I'm going to know it's my person yeah. when I know it's somebody that's going to push me spiritually mm -hmm. because then the rest will fall into place. The rest of your life will fall into place. I think happiness will come wow. that way. You know? Yeah. I don't know. No, I love anyway, that. Anyway, I recommend the book. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a book. Here's a link, link to the book. <laughs> right there. Click I'm it. I'm not sponsored. No. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, yeah so, that's that's for me. What about you? No, no yeah. you go first. Okay. <laughs> no, how do you, how do you know when he's the one? It's I have hard. No idea. It's hard. I don't. I feel like I don't like I like I'm in a place where I'm like, dude, I I really don't know, and I think about it a lot because my best friends are married and they're younger than I am. They've been married for a couple of years already. <laughs> so like we have a group text and they just talk about like their marriage stuff, right? Like not problems, but just their marriage relationships and like how it's this and how it's that. And then we talk about like other people that are married and their families or whatever. And I'm like, dude, if stuff like, like I could never, because like, when will I know, you know? And they're always telling me like, no, you're going to find the one. But I'm just like, one, I'm not looking. And two, I feel like I'm so busy that I don't like, I don't even give myself time to think like, yeah. this is what I'm looking for in somebody. Right. Yeah. And then the time, the one time that I thought like, okay, this is my person, it wasn't. Yeah. So then like the, like the, basically like the outline that I had, it got like crumbled like quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After a lot of years, obviously, but like the one person that I was like, no, this is going to be my person for the rest of my life. And I pretty sure he felt the same way. Um, it just, it wasn't it, you know? So it's like. Probably for me and him, we both had to, like, scratch yeah, it's all, all of that, you know? <laughs> that can never happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not even that it didn't happen. It's, like, now we're not going to look for that. Yeah. Because we were each other's that person, and it didn't work out. Didn't work well, out. Ha what's that from that video? You might be the perfect package, but got delivered to the wrong address. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Yeah. And then from, from there, like, even a, a step further, like you, might, you might be the perfect person, but for the wrong person. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, and and we always we always say what like what it it's been said more times from everyone over like I know we're perfect for each other, but it was just the wrong time. The wrong time, yeah. Oh, well, right person, what, wrong time. What it, what if it wasn't the right person? Yeah. What if yeah. it was the right time yeah. to know that that so wasn't the perfect I think person? That's what was my situation yeah. is like that was the right person. Yeah. But we were just not in the right time for each other. Like, but I don't think we're ever gonna meet again. Like, that's it. Like, I'm good. Like, yeah. we're yeah. It's like how yeah, we're good. How she was saying earlier, or from when she talked about this, it's you have to know the person you're gonna go to battle with and in battle in life, mm -hmm. because life is gonna give you good days and bad days, good weeks and bad weeks. Okay, years. So good years and, good bad. Years and bad years. For sure. So you have like, to understand that, like. Who are you going to battle with? Who are you going? Who's going to be who's, there? Who are you choosing as your yeah, partner? Yeah, who are you choosing as your partner? Because it's either elevate you or prevent you. Yeah. Because we all go through changes. Yeah, I know you and I and you were not the same person we were no. years ago. Yeah, How, not even like uh, sometimes a, a couple months, months ago. Yeah, I'm like, Whoa, so it's just like you change. can we all go through the changes together? Can me and you, whatever noise we're having externally, can we survive this? And Abner said it himself. He's like, the young generation, the misconception they have is when there's a bad moment and a tough moment, people, we give up. You yeah. Did. You're not happy. You We're did. not happy. You yeah. did. So hold on. I think my person for sure is going to be like, I'm going to know that that's my person when we both are in an argument and we realize it's not us against each other. It's us against the argument. Wow. Because I think that alone, like a lot of people are like, no, it's me against Love you. That. And then it's like, so now we're not going to talk until you apologize. I love that. But now yeah. you know you apologize because I'm yeah. right and you're wrong. No. True. That's the issue. Let's go against that and then we'll be good. You know, let's figure out how to fix that problem. Yeah. And I think a lot of the times like, okay, we get so caught up in the feelings, love. Yeah. Oh my God. I love being in this person's arms. L but love or lust. Love, lust. Sometimes, yeah, either yeah. or yeah. sometimes it can be really yeah. confused. But even if you look at the word like sentimiento, it means feeling and feelings lie to you. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it, you know, it's, it's not always going to be truthful and feelings come and go. You're happy. Literally. You're sad. You're like in love. But even in a marriage, especially if you're with somebody for 30 years, 40 years, 20 years, 10 years, you're not always going to feel that feeling of love. So I think 
like mm-hmm. fundamentally, if you're looking for the one, your life partner, really, I think it comes down to what do you guys truly align on a lot of your views, mm-hmm. values, belief systems? How would you maneuver this situation? How do you see money? Because it is a partnership at, at the end yeah. of the day in that way as well. I mean, having those tough conversations, yeah. Because if you just go based off of this person makes me feel so lovely in the moment. Oh, and the way she smiles or the way that he looks at me. Or the way that we look together. Or the, the way that we look together. Okay, one day, 10 years down the line, you're, you're going to look at this person and be like, like yeah. Like, but, you know, you have to make sure there's so many other strings and things that are really attaching you to this person. Because then, yeah, like the feelings will fade. The lust will fade. The I want to jump your bones type of feeling is going to fade. That is inevitable. Mm-hmm. So looking ahead of that and being like, okay, what do I align with? What do I want my life to be like? That Those are the questions that I know. Like, okay, this is the one. Like, because yeah. it goes so much further than feelings, which feelings can honestly lie to you. They lie to me every day. I feel like every time I'm like, I'm feeling this way. I'm crying, but do I really feel this? Like yeah. the same way you don't yeah. like the way you feel today. You're not gonna feel yeah. like that tomorrow. Exactly. Because tomorrow's a whole new day. It's gonna be a whole other, yeah. a whole other thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where are we at now? Um, What's the next right, this one? one? This one. Now that you're talking about relationships, this, it is. This is a crazy one. This oh is crazy. God. <laughs> so it says this person didn't word it correctly, but it says I wanted. Like, to but let me fix it for us. <laughs> yeah, let me fix it. <laughs> Let's try it. Auto correct. <laughs> It says, um, I wanted to know if your partner is still talking to their ex in the relationship. Is it a bad thing? If your partner is still talking to their ex. And then it says, they're not text. They are texting normal conversations, but I just wanted to know if it's still bad. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and say <laughs> yes. I would say yes, right? Because donde hubo fuego, ceniza queda. Yeah. And there it is. Yeah. It's yes, and I feel kind of hypocritical by saying that because I'm friends with almost all of my exes. <laughs> to be honest, I have no bad blood. But I will say, like, if I ever found, like, if I ever, if I'm dating someone, they're all cut oh, off completely. 100%. Same. Just that respect. Yeah, yes. but yeah, that felt really hypocritical to say. <laughs> We're all besties yeah, for that now. One up real quick. <laughs> okay. Um, this one says, I know the podcast won't come up till Monday, but it says, uh, Why do men? that are good fathers and setting good examples to their kids. Uh, but the wife slash baby mama doesn't celebrate Father's Day anyway. How they get celebrated. This, people don't know how to fucking... Hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are they talking about why, why men don't get celebrated I, they, Father's Day? Yeah, I think that's the over? part. Like, why, why do... What, there was a video that's been trending the last, like, two weeks of he has his clothes out, the botas out... And then getting woken up to mariachi, but he's just making fun of it because guys don't get celebrated the way mothers do. Some I, of them feel. I, I think I what he's saying you. is like, I as a good you. father, how come my baby mom is not acknowledging me? Yeah, but I it, think that's what he's saying, yeah. right? But like taking it, like taking it a step further is, why do we celebrate Mother's Day? And it has to be we praise right. Them. But and as it's guys, two days. yeah. So as guys, Girl, we 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 get. I can't. That one's enough. Yeah. But like as guys, like that's where we we land. Where some of them There's, want, yeah, some of them want wants that wants that a uh, celebration. But as, in rea- in reality, as a as a as a father, as a parent, as a man, like you know, you're not always gonna get that that round of applause. You're not always gonna get that satisfaction of hey, thank you. But it's just, I heard it today. Like as a man, like. You need to do that no matter yeah. what. As a father, yeah. you need to do that. I have, like, a really strong opinion on this topic, to be honest, because I definitely agree that men don't get their flowers when it comes to fatherhood. Men are so yeah. important. Also, shout out to the single moms out there. There's so many circumstances why mm-hmm. a mother would be a single dads. mom. Yeah. And they're single dads, yeah. of course. They're single just parents in general. But I think sometimes we don't put the amount of value like having a father in a household is so important mind you this does not underplay what women do for their kids women i mean you're not a mom right or are you okay well well, my mom's a a mom obviously but you know i see everything that she's my my mom's mom and i just grew up seeing everything my mom would do for Mm -hmm. me the the role of a mother is incomparable right but what a a father can do for a family especially a father that's present is so powerful and it even shows like if there are families that maybe don't have a strong father figure present like the um, you know the the rates of going to jail go up the rates of you know Mm -hmm. dropping out of of school go up i know not everybody wants to hear that but that's just facts Mm -hmm. Uh, the role that a father plays is 
immensely important. So I think it's really sad that maybe men aren't celebrated, I think, the way that they should be. I think and to, also to throw that, um, oh, sorry, single just women are louder. Single moms are louder than single dads. Because mm. single dads or dads that have complete custody of their kids, they don't have time to be like, I do it all. I'm this. Right. I'm that. Yeah. But moms that have full custody of their kids, yeah, they do have time because all they're thinking is like how to put him down. Yeah. How to make him look like a deadbeat. It's, you it, know, and it, it, I feel like dads are not like that. Like, mm. single dads or dads that have full custody of their kids, they don't care to make the mom look bad because ultimately that's the mom. Well, gave I mean, my blessing and that's it. It's just, it just depends on where they're at in life. It's true. Too. You know, the severity of the relationship with the mother, the father. But one thing I will tell the guys, it's, Hey, you may not get all the applause in the world and the gratification of being a great father because a lot of the things that you do, not everybody's going to see it. Mm -hmm. But as long as you know what you're doing and how you are with your kids and, and you as a father, take that. Know you're appreciated, and it may not be by the physical people here, mm -hmm. but it may, it may be appreciated by the power above that will bless you along the way. Absolutely. You know, and it's taking it a step further I'm sorry, guys. Like, yes, we want all the applause in the world. We just may not get it. Yeah. And you have to understand that in the world that this is, it it, it may not come. Mm -hmm. It may not come for the people right around you because how I said la uh, last time, you get judged for the things you don't do, and then you get criticized for the, how you I do think, things. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, it it's your life. No one taught you how to be a dad. No one taught you how to be a mother. No, no one taught you how to be no a parent. Book. There's no actual yeah. book. As many books as are out there, there's there's ways to do it how they did it. Yeah. But you'll Every never know different, that. different, different mm -hmm. needs. Yeah, you never know that until you yourself. Yeah. And I, yeah, and there's, like, again, like, for the fathers out there that are listening to this, like, you, it, I'm talking about the present fathers that really care about their kids, right? Because we all know that there's deadbeat dads or deadbeat moms, right? There's everything. But yeah. for the men that are out there that don't, that aren't getting their flowers, you guys are the protectors, providers. Like, you guys are a lot of the times the foundation of a good home, of a spiritually woke or yoked guy who comes in there and he protects his family. I mean, like a good solid man. You guys create incredible, incredible family. So you guys are appreciated, you know? And it, again, like, it's just sad that, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I just feel like sometimes in general, like men really aren't as appreciated yeah. as they should yeah. be. Like in our society, I think even not just as fathers, just in life. In like life, men, even men that don't have flowers. kids, yeah, yeah. they yeah. don't. And I don't think men are out here like saying we're underappreciated. They just kind of keep saying. it to themselves yeah, a lot saying. of the times. And that, Women and are just happen to be louder about it. I think so. so I honestly like, that's think why, so. like you know, a a, a a single mom can post on Father's Day like, "Oh, I have my kids. Like, Happy Father's Day to you, right? You're gonna do that to a girl, like one of yeah. your homegirls or whatever the yeah. case is, because she has." Three fourths custody of the kids, but you're they're not going to send that same message to the mm -hmm. dad because why he yeah. has the one fourth custody. Yeah. But then there's going to be the single dad that has full custody of his kids. No one's going to hit. No one's going to say, "Hey, Happy Mother's Day to you" for playing both roles. Mm -hmm. they're, it's just it doesn't work that way. I, yeah. I would I would say this that for a dad, again, you don't need the applause in the world because you know this is your job. This is what you need to provide. Right there. You need to provide it no matter what happens. No matter if they approve of you, no matter if they look at you this way, yeah. no matter if they judge you, you have to provide for your kids. So not be a dad, but to be a father. Yeah. You know, because it turns it it trickles down to your kids are the represent, representation of how you taught them. And it may not be as perfect as others, but, you know, that's your job. How you, you want to be a present father we want to be a dad or a father that was talked about of, oh, yeah, but he's just over there. Yeah. So it's just uh, everything. Yeah. Years to come. What can you provide for your kids? What do you leave for your kids? What do you teach them? So, the like, uh, what do they say? Men are the providers, protectors uh, of a family. And if you can't do none of those, you, you're, not, you're not a value. And when you're not a value... Boom, you get thrown to the trash yeah. and you get talked upon. And it's fine because that happens. Mm -hmm. But as a father, you have to you have to protect, you have to provide, and you have to lead. But sometimes a lot of, like, I get that you're saying that, but a lot of the times these kids just want you to be there. 
Yeah. Right. Like they don't even care if you can, if you got the money, if you got a job. Like, well, it's just like how we said when we were just kids. Spend time with you. Just take them to the freaking park. Well, it's just like how we said when we were kids. As kids, we didn't, we don't realize this. Yeah. We just want yeah. our dad there. That's what I'm saying. But we just want our dad there. We just, like, yeah, we just want our dad there. But and then it gets to the, hey, but I want this and I want to mm-hmm. go here. You know, as, as a parent, you, know, you want to be able to take your kids to these theme parks. You want to buy them a happy meal. These places. On Friday. Happy meals. We talked about it in other episodes where our parents back then maybe they didn't have enough to yeah. buy us all happy meals. So they bought one happy meal, and, the, and we all share it. Yeah, and it's just that we're yeah. just it's, but it's newer age. We're not our parents' history. We're, we're not, not our parents' our, story. We're not we're our not, parents. We're not our parents. And like to girls that are listening that are, are out there dating like us. Who you marry, you get to choose that, honey. But you oh, do not yeah. get to choose who your kid's dad is. So when I'm dating now, I'm looking at their qualities. Like, I want kids. That's my dream is to be a mom. I want kids. I want land. So I now I'm not even just dating them based off of, like, oh, is he cute? Does he drive? Like, what? Do you, I'm looking at him like, okay, is this going to be a good like man qualities. for my kids? Because that's number one. They don't get to choose that. Yeah, and unfortunately, true. women, you know, they don't really think about the repercussions if they do decide to maybe have a one-night stand I, do what you want, right? But a pregnancy could come out of that. A child could come out of that. And in turn, is this someone that you think is going to be responsible for your child's life? Like, you have to... Yeah. Or at least I try to think yeah. about what stuff should, like that. Now that I'm, you know, dating and all that stuff. <laughs> what did Chad Ocho Cinco said? I look at the girl's feet, and if they're <laughs> athletic, then I can make a yeah. family out of this. Wait, like, okay, you're looking at their feet? <laughs> okay, all right. like, damn, how are those toenails? Damn. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> oh, there was there was another one. I got this. Yeah, ready for the, There is opinion on dating a single parent. Oh, I just got that wow. one right now. Well, I I mean I I'm at an age where like I think the majority of the guys that I'm dating are single parents. Look, Kaiga, Kaiga. I mean I don't know. I'm like 29, so like I'm now dating like 30 30 year olds a little bit like mid 30s and stuff like that young 30s and yeah for the most part a lot of them are they already have a child and I'm like it doesn't matter to me at all as long as like I mean even if they don't have a good relationship with their the mother of their child it's like it's it sucks and I would encourage them to mend it to have like a cool blended happy yeah. everybody hangs out at Christmas type vibe instead <laughs> <laughs> honestly I'd prefer that than tension but I'll still do it would you? Do you do it? I mean, honestly, I have not thought about it, but I... You've like never I, dated a guy with a, a, a no. child? Really? I don't really date people either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Honestly, I really don't date... date I tell, really don't go out. But tell us how you feel, food. Tell us how you feel. I'm like... She said she's dating people. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, I think the same thing, right? Like uh, anybody I probably would date might have kids because that's like the age. We all had kids young. Everyone's yeah. a mom. Everyone's a dad. Um, okay, so let me let me take it a step further then. When dating someone that has kids, would you feel a certain type of way if they put their kids first? No. If they don't have enough time for you? No. <laughs> Like, you guys are like, insane. No, like, synchronized. What were you like? We're like, no. No, like, no, you need to handle that. Yeah, like, be present. Yeah. Yeah. If you didn't, if you put me before your kids, if anything, There's that's something a red flag. For sure. That's right. red flag. And I think any woman that, I'm no offense to the women out there that do this, actually. Can I name some? I just, actually, <laughs> <laughs> I just but name drop. I just, I'm like, I'll just tag them later. Yeah. Like, why would you want to date a man yeah. that puts his own, you before his own blood? Like, mm-hmm. I understand, like, you know, yeah. you want priority and I think they should make time for you, but that's his kids. I also yeah. think like, okay, when you're dating somebody with a child um, and say you don't have kids, you're not going to be that child's mom. Exactly. So that role is taken. So you show up, you do your part. You be a friend to the kid. You build a relationship. If it works out, it works out. If it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't. You just know your role. Yeah. You be yeah. a good role model for them. Yeah, but don't feel pressure like, oh, I have to play mom. You don't. Yeah. The child has a mom. Yeah. Like, we've just been talking about just topics, you know, yeah. which is cool. Yeah. I like that. Just random topics. Because I know you're like, we're going to get into, like, everybody's life and stuff. And I'm like, I, it's cool that, like, we're even able to have like deep conversations and it's not even about anything in specific it's just yeah. our experiences you know it's just there's so much there's so much that comes with with what we talk about and we're only able to talk about things that 
come from experiences. Yeah. You know, um, you can't talk about what you don't know about. Yeah. And, and a lot of people want to do, <laughs> a lot of people do that. They want, yeah. It's because they just want to have an input. Yeah. I just want to have an input on that there and that there. But it's like, all right, have you gone through that? Mm-hmm. No, but I just think, well, if you haven't been through it, how can you talk about it? Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, what's your track record? Do you have some, like when you go to a job, do you have a resume? Do you fit this position that but you can do able to? not only do you have a resume, do you have references? Like, oh. mm, can Damn. you really back it up? Yeah, right. I can definitely past twelve a.m. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm I'm past twelve a.m., we could definitely. Time. What's that song? Drop it low, girl. Drop it, drop it low. Drop it low. <laughs> Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> but one one thing I I do want to bring up, and it's highlights of our life, even though they're tough. Can you talk about really in right now? What was one of the toughest moments in your life that you had to maneuver through and it changed you forever? Ooh, the toughest parts of my life that made me better, I guess. It changed you. It changed me. Oh, my gosh, so many. I'm like, I don't know which one. Mm. Like, pick one where you're like, I was never, like, I could never be that person anymore. Oh. Oh. Like, it did that to you. Oh, like you're it. no longer that girl. Oh my gosh. Oof. Oh my gosh. There's so I feel like that's a hard question. Hmm. I don't even I know I feel like I know a couple. It's just so it's like so hard sometimes to even like face it or talk about it. I would say honestly The one that no one knows about. Okay, probably in, like, 2020, okay. when I told you I was arguably, like, it was my darkest year by far. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like I said, lost my job. Pandemic came, which brought a lot of sadness, depression. Um, I was drinking a lot. Like, I, I think a lot of people, I know a lot of people made a joke out of it, but they were like, we're just at home, and all we could do is just kind of, like, turn yeah, up. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. All in the guise of turning up. I know, like, people use the words, oh, let's turn up and stuff, but really, what does that mean? It means kind of numb yourself. I with feel. with alcohol or numb yourself with, I don't know, doing things that maybe aren't the healthiest thing for you spiritually or, you know, your body. Mm-hmm. So I do remember in 2020, yeah, it was like a lot of, you know, I was living with someone that I loved dearly, but we weren't good for each other. And it was just so unhealthy all around. We were just both mentally really like not healthy in the best place. And we would have like get togethers and things like that. And sometimes I would find myself like, okay, I was drinking a little bit too much. It was one of those where I'm like, I'm feeling so down about myself and I'm, I feel like I'm drowning. So I'm just going to drown myself with getting numb and just, you know, masking this temporary sadness and pain with, music and then just turning up and like let's just go let's go and then just waking up the next day and just feeling like mm-hmm. way worse than you even did before you started you know drinking like emotionally plus not you're hungover and plus now you're hungover <laughs> plus now you're having like an existential crisis like yeah. you know what anxiety is like you can barely even breathe like you think you're gonna die yeah it's like a hangover but you're also shake you're like you feel like you're shaking in a sense but you're also like oh my god and you're like questioning your life and i would get like i'm never gonna do that again yeah i'll never do do it again again. until you're like well i feel like crap let me do it again and numb yourself Mm -hmm. over it's like this never-ending cycle and i know we glamorize like going out and drinking and like we glamorize it in music in media and everything that we see but again like i know the enemy's a liar and tells us this is what's gonna make you happy go out FOMO, look at all these people doing it. But then you're the one in your bed the next day, like, dang it. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, you feel shame or you feel embarrassment. So I would say, like, who I was in 2020, the way I was dealing with my sadness, the way I was dealing with the loss of, like, just so many different things, Mm -hmm. I feel like, for sure, I don't want to ever go back to that. Because I've never, I've always been an athlete. I run, like, I would take it out on running half marathons, marathons. I wasn't running that year. Um, I never want to go back to that person. I would say for sure. I want to, the, the way I've always dealt with my pain was running. It was like working out and things like that. So for sure, so that was who, so. Who were you then and what's the difference now? Um, I think I was lost. I was in a super dark, lost state of mind. I didn't know what was up, what was down. All I knew was just like, you know what? 
I'm just going to like mask it with faking on a smile and hey, let's turn up. But what does turn up mean? Like I said, it means let's let's turn up, let's drink, let's take shots or yeah. whatever. I don't want to go back to that person. Is your healthy. circle still the same? Um, yeah, I, I would say um, but yes. Like, like, are they the same? I think n- nobody in my circle is the same. I think we're all all trying to figure it out and and elevate. I know recently I've been like on a whole nother thing. I've isolated myself for sure from a lot of not even specific people, just like people in general. I've been yeah. very to myself and it's been really nice. Like I said, I think God will put you alone to speak to you and, and he's been working wonders in my life in that sense, but it is lonely. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like what kind of I So if we could balance. take it yeah. if we could take it back and kind of ref- reflect what advice would you give a 15 year old you so 15 i was in high school mm. i wish i had found god earlier because then i feel well i don't wish anything because i feel like god found me when he needed to but um i would tell her to surrender first off like surrender to just the fact that life is not going to be, it is not fair to you. It is not fair to you. Anybody in this room, man, like yeah. it is going to throw its shit at you no matter what. You can sit here and think everybody's life is perfect. It's not. So I would just say, you know what? It's going to come with it. And also I would like to tell myself like, like I had mentioned before, your feelings will lie to you and they will come and go. Sometimes when you're in like the pit of sadness and destruction and you feel like this is going to be your life forever and like, yeah. no, you feel so helpless. Mm-hmm. Right. And then. The sun comes out the next day. And then you wake up. And then you wake up. And then sometimes you go right back down. So just remembering to give yourself grace in those moments where you are in your room and you're alone and you're looking at the wall and you're scrolling on social media and you're feeling so empty and like comparing yourself. Just know that that is a an emotion that lies and you need to let it flow through you like water. Water flows, man. It'll flow in and out of you. Don't be scared of it when it happens. Embrace it and just know, like, this sun is going to come up. Like, it's mm-hmm. every time, every, every time, day. every time. Sometimes it'll take a month, a year. Sometimes it'll be in an hour. You know, my emotions tend to be like this. <laughs> so You, you said, you a, you said a, a very powerful word that's pretty much looked over a lot. Grace. Yeah. That's been my favorite, like, thing lately, like, probably for, like, a couple of months is, like, Dude, just give yourself grace. I literally just texted it to one of my friends last night. What is it? Um, what does it mean? I was like, dude, just give yourself grace. You know, you're having a hard time right now. You've made it through harder times before. Give yourself grace. Give yourself the credit. Give yourself whatever you need to just continue to give yeah. yourself. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's just so empowering to to give yourself grace. Like, you know. What do, What does grace mean to you? I think similarly, it's like you, sometimes we, our internal dialogue, like the things, the way that we speak to ourselves is so negative. Like imagine if you had a roommate and the entire time this roommate was saying all the things you say to yourself on a daily basis. Oh, Jess, like you're looking a little thick today or Jess, you know what? Your hair's looking kind of crazy today or Jess, you're not good enough or Jess, Mm -hmm. you know, people don't like you for you. They like you, you know, all the things that we say to ourselves sometimes it's like grace is, you know what? Just, quiet down your mind Mm -hmm. be kind to yourself like just be kind to yourself because you live in your mind your mind is your reality your thoughts are your reality that's the bottom line people forget that they are their best motivator and their biggest critic and they're their own coach but we look for the gratification and the Mm -hmm. affirmations coming from other people when they should have always started within us you know, and one thing that I've I started back then, and, and I haven't done it recently, but I took these this act and I just put it in, inside my head. But I would write messages on the mirror in the morning or the night before. I would just write, you are amazing. You're doing great. Keep going. So when I wake up and I'm going to go brush my teeth, going to go get ready, like I'm looking, I just read it over. I'm like, all right, cool. Tell yourself this. As much as you don't believe that you are amazing, that you are great, keep telling yourself. Keep reminding yourself. The more you remind yourself, the more you tell yourself, the more you hear it, the more your actions are going to speak for it and start start changing for it. Kind of like keep, fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it because what like what good does it do if I tell you every day I'm sad, I'm depressed? What, what good does it do that every day I'm crying? 
but I'm not moving in the direction that I need to. Yeah. I'm not I'm not moving nowhere. I'm not I'm not doing what I, I yeah. need to be doing. Mm-hmm. I'm just literally staying stagnant and I'm letting the I'm letting the louder over, voices basically. take over. I'm letting Absolutely. the devil take over. I'm letting this Damn. power that should just you're you're done, bro. You're good. You're done. Come over here now. Yeah, yeah. And it's like there was a video and it's just my hands were up. The devil won. I'm ready to quit. It's it, bro. It's it. I was ready, ready. Like, a couple months ago, I was ready. Like, I'm good, bro. Like, I can't no more. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a lot easier. But then the higher power blocked those noises and it said, not yet. You got a bigger purpose. Keep going. Yeah. And it's just one of those things. Again, in the middle of the rain, put my hands up. That's what I said. God works in the Thank darkness. Thank you. Yeah. Dark works in, in darkness. You. Yeah. You're dark, and the only thing that can illuminate the dark is the light. Yeah. And that is God, like, honestly. And the other thing, like, I want to say is I, I, I urge anybody that is going through, like, a tough moment where they're just so beating down on yourself like also create like an environment for yourself yeah. that makes you feel good like even on social media yes. you know every time you're scrolling on social media you are taking in that yes. person's energy that message yeah. that that music that sound yep. so i have i have done a clean <laughs> swipe of my instagram yeah. i muted maybe accounts that you know i still consider yeah, I don't know, people that I know or whatever, but just didn't make me feel good. Their content didn't make my soul feel good. And I followed all the pages that yeah. made me feel... Because you are... What you see on your feed is going to affect mm-hmm. your mood. So now Daily. when I scroll and I'm going through like yeah. those late night binges that we all do where we're just like wired. In the and morning, we're, over here. Yeah, yeah. Like literally, I'm like, I can't sleep. Yeah, yeah. three in the morning, we message each other. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, now I'm like, I, I, I'm i seeing things that make, for me, it's personally, it's like I'll see like really cool what preachers have to say or mm-hmm. positive yeah. people or people that are living just simple lifestyles, happy, frolicking in their farms and things like, things that, I, that make me happy. Create an environment, you guys, online and in person with your circle, with the, even the music that you're listening to. Yeah. Music, you know, psychologically like it's passively infiltrating your psyche it's passively infiltrating your thoughts yeah. and and it's passive right you don't have to actively listen to music for yeah. it to affect your mood for it to affect the way that you feel and think like i don't know I, I i i say this and i say this very proudly you may think the song with the baddest beat with the more bass with the sickest lyrics is the one that's going to hype you up to get throughout your day but the ones that empower you are the ones that hit your soul. Oh I cannot stress that enough. You know? And mind you, I worked in hip hop for a long time. Like I used to work at Power 106. Love hip hop. I have been surrounded by it. But and I still listen to it sometimes to work out when I need to be angry and aggressive, right? But yeah. on my day to day when I'm driving, mm-hmm. you know, I've come to find and it's so crazy we're having this discussion because I remember I'm like, I really want to see what the effects of music do on my brain, on my mood while I'm driving in traffic. I'm already irritated. Yeah. I put on, um, I'm not even going to say the song, but it was like an aggressive type of song or whatever. And I just remember I felt mad. I was like aggressive. <laughs> all <laughs> the beat was hitting and stuff. I was like, dang, like get out I, my way, we went everybody. To, we went to the gym. I put on Eminem without yeah. me. And I'm like, guess who's back? And I'm over here like, Fuck yeah, all y'all, mother- yeah, like, I'm here. You, feel that no, way. Yeah. you know, if you want to work out, it's cool. I but. got my first speeding ticket listening to Kanye West, <laughs> Yeezus, like, a black skin. Yeah. Is that the song? Right. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, because I was so angry listening to that song because it's like, do, 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 like, the whole time. Yeah. So I'm going, like, 85 on the freeway, and then does, the cop's yeah. like, what are you doing? It's some, like, yeah, it's passively, some different like, moves. Yeah, like, sometimes you. I'm listening to, like, Karin Neon, and I'm, like, going <laughs> 60 so on the freeway, like, yeah. crying. Don't yeah. call him, fool. Don't call him at that No, point. I'm, like, going 20 on the street. Like, yeah. girl, I'm taking my time. It, but it, it'll, it'll really elevate it, whatever it, you're feeling. Exactly. The more you feed, whatever you feed your brain and your soul mm-hmm. is what's going to really, it's the trifecta. Mm-hmm. Last week, coming to the podcast, Shit when didn't go as planned, but what no one knows until I tell you guys mm-hmm. is on the way to like I live in Fontana, driving to LA, like I'm lit, I'm oceans again, refiner, mm-hmm. hallelujah. I'm putting them on repeat. We get here and things didn't go as planned. Then I get some really great news. I'm like, it's I so know. true. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Like it's good, bro. Like I'm I'm really fine. And then you just see the different personas that you're in. And yeah. they know it. Like I said, I've taken a step back. So while people are out, I'm at home and I'm listening to the music. Like there's a song called Gratitude. 
And it's it. gratitude for the sunrise. Gratitude for the sun. And it makes you think and about those like, things. Can you get yeah. me to create me a playlist? Because yeah. I need even, just even feel good, feel good for take, your soul music. Yeah. There's music to perriar. I'll sit what? there all day and listen to all this stuff. To per- There's a time and a place, but the, for the, the most song, part. The song, Three Little Birds, Bob Marley. Simple. It's very simple. And, and, and it just, it's that part. Whatever you feed your mind, it's what's, how you're going to really feel. 100%. And again, people, if you're listening to this, I hope you start questioning yourself. Mm -hmm. You start asking yourself these questions that really need to be talked about. Because if you're living in a life of emptiness, Mm -hmm. you have to trickle down everything that's happening. Go down to the root of every little thing. Whatever trauma you went through, whatever whatever event, whatever breakup, whatever life-changing you went through, how did you react? Life is 10% what is done to you and 90% how you react to it. So true. But also, like, I hope whoever's listening right now, like, if they're not happy with anything in their current life, like, they take a step back and they look at their day, right? Like, write it out. Like, in the morning, I wake up. This is what I do. I do this next. I do this next. What don't I have to do? And what do I do in that, like, time frame that upsets me or, like, makes me feel, like, angry or, like, mornings are hesitant. That's so good you say that. Mornings are my favorite favorite type of the day it yeah. is clean start it is like yeah. put on oceans or put on some like reckless okay, level like so all these what, other songs what i do what i do ask because you're you're so powerful you're you're, <laughs> Aww, you're so you. you're from what you post on your social media everybody gets to see everybody sees this this jessica that's just so <sighs> heavenly and and the aura is so powerful even through social media like i personally can just feel it when i read whatever you post I'm like, wow, like, I've been feeling this way, dude. Like, thank you for posting this. So first, if you could just tell us something of guidance from waking up. Like, say today I woke up just, someone woke up today ungrateful, mad. How can you take us through this morning? So that was me this morning. This morning I woke up just, like, irritated. I woke up to, you know, you wake up sometimes, and when I don't follow my usual thing that makes me mm-hmm. feel good, right, when you're like, oh, I'm going to be lazy today and not do it, and I, the first thing I do is open up my phone. Like, my eyes are still half closed. The light is bright in my face, mm-hmm. and I'm looking at the first thing is, like, my DMs, and I'm seeing, you know, some backlash from, like, you know, I, I, went, I went to, like, this prayer thing yesterday, and I got some backlash for it because I'm going to stand firm in my faith, and that's, again, like, it's the internet, the internet be interneting. Yeah. So whatever. And so I woke up already like irritated. So I understand you're human and you're going to fall. Don't, like I said, Grace, mm-hmm. don't be upset at yourself yeah. if you had a lazy morning and you didn't do the, all the things like the, the drinking of the mm-hmm. water and the going on the run or whatever. Mm-hmm. Just, but just keep in mind how you do feel when you don't do those things. And yeah. when you do do those things that like, for instance, for me, it's like put on a worship song Thank God. Start your day with that type of intention. It sets the tone for your entire day. You're not always going to do it, but on the days that you do it, you're going to feel so unstoppable. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. A morning routine is, it's like the most powerful thing you can do, I think, in your day. It's funny you you say that. Like, even today in the morning, I woke up, and the the last two days, I wake up, and fuck, I'm like half asleep. I just get my phone, and I'm going, and within that, within the first 10, 30 seconds, I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Like, Put the phone down. Put the phone down. Wake up. Put the phone yeah, down. Like, I'm telling myself that, Jess. <laughs> yeah, like, wake up. No. And the reason why I say that is, like, when you wake up, the first thing you want to do is is go to your phone. What messages, what of notifications, what's happening? But take a step back. Look at, do the do the work internally in the root work. Breathe. Breathe. Like, like outside your window. Yeah. Like, what, what, what's what's that? Curtains. Yeah, what was that? Like, mm-hmm. there's, like, a... Someone put put out like a recommendation. When you wake up, go outside, endure the sun for ten minutes, and not even if there's no sun, endure the outside, the clouds that are out there. Step on the grass to the, bare feet. The breath that Grounding. yes, the breath that you can so fucking breathing. take outside. You get to breathe. I don't know the exact statistics, but how many people did not get to wake up today mm-hmm. because whatever happened in in the in the world in their life, mm-hmm. and they can't do that, but yet you can, and you get to wake up, you get to walk, you get to feel, you get to breathe, you get to live your life yeah. on your terms. And how many? And I've I've said this years ago. How many kids don't get to experience what we're experiencing? 
they don't they're suffering either they can't move their legs they don't have enough to they can't walk on their own they More can't breathe on their own their parents yeah. are you know even like um actually dylan since we've been working together with my dad sponsor jlv pest control hit them up they'll, they'll got you <laughs> let's go uh, <laughs> But there is this this lady <laughs> at a company. Off, <laughs> there's there's this 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 lady in in Colton in a company. And our first conversation that we've ever had was, "How are you?" And I get hit with back of, and this is in the midst of I lost my grandpa that year, mm-hmm. my best friend a couple months prior that same year, and and I asked her like, "Hey, are, cómo está?" Mm-hmm. No, pues. Pues aquí no más, bien. Oh, ¿qué pasó? ¿Por, ¿Por qué está así, you know? I just lost my daughter. And we just had an hour conversation, bro. Because she literally was like, pues aquí estoy, ¿qué más hago? Like, I'm like, damn. I'm like, muchas gracias por decirme. Mm-hmm. And he was with me the last time, uh, two months ago, a month ago. And I finally seen her again. I was like, ¿cómo está? Like, me da mucho gusto de verla, de que es siempre que vengo me, me da cosa de verla porque puedo hablar con usted. Y dijo, no, pues ya más mejor, mi hijo de mí. Mm. Aquí andamos. Y le dije, like, señora, like, no sabe la alegría que me da de verla y escuchar este su testimonio. Mm-hmm. Porque usted sé que está pasando por algo, pero nunca ha fallado, mm-hmm. no ha fallado. Y aquí está ahí. No, oh, me dijo muchas gracias. And I'm like, like I see that, dude. Like, mm-hmm. I see, like, so the, like not just our parents that have gone through shit, but I see every parent, every every person that has gotten up after losing somebody, after suffering a tragic loss, that they're getting their fucking asses up and they're yeah. going mm-hmm. to act like nothing ever happened in the world. No struggle, no worry. And they're doing this. I commend you. And I appreciate you because you mo- you guys motivate. You motivate us. You motivate people that when they hear this testimony that you're just, wow, thank you so much mm-hmm. because I feed off that. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to shine a light on my guy, Ray. Ray is, I think, <laughs> anywhere from like, I think he's in his 60s, tall African-American, and I met him at work. He worked at a uh, vegetable oil refinery. I always worked in the back. And every time I would see him every two weeks, he knew my dad first. And we started getting into, like, when I started going through changes and, you know, acknowledging more before my son. Every time I would see him, the biggest smile. Hey, what's up, big man? How you doing? I was like, I'm doing good, bro. And, again, he working in an oil company. I'm pants on, nice shirt. I'm clean in a sense. Mm-hmm. I didn't give a shit. Go hug them. I'm big on hugs. Hug your motherfucking people. Yeah. Hug them. You never know when the last time you're ever yeah. going to hug them in the world. And I always hug them. So when my son came into the picture, we were about to have his baby shower. There was only a few people I've ever asked to come to my baby shower. And there was only a few people that came, right? And I was very intentional on that part. My son is only going to be around people that I know and the people that I love. So I don't want him to be around people that I don't want because yeah. I'm intentional like that. And, again, I have all my friends. I got my family. And then I have this guy working in the vegetable oil company. And I literally had an invitation, went to work. Hey, how you doing? We started talking because a month prior, my dad was in the hospital. And I went to work. And he was like, hey, man, how's your dad? And I was like. It's not that good, man. It's not that good. But he was there and he hugged me. So when I went, I was like, we we're talking. I was like, hey, what are you doing on this day? Ah, uh, no, nothing, nothing. I was like, here you go. I was like, I would want you to be here on my day with my kid and my family. And he started crying. He's like, man, don't do this to me. And I was like, no, I have to. And yeah, as soon as he got there to the to the baby shower, I went outside and I Walked him and his wife. Mm-hmm. And yeah, everybody takes it, right? All Hispanics. <laughs> and then seeing this, I think he's taller than me, like 6'4", just looking at him, and they're like, I'm like, this is my brother. Like, wow. this is my guy. Yeah. And then a month, couple months later, unfortunately, he, uh, he 
went to work, and then the guy that worked with him over there is like, hey, yo, you know Ray, right? I was like, yeah. He's like, he went to your baby shower, huh? And I was like, yeah, bro. Like, hey, um, I don't know if they told you, but he suffered a heart attack. What? And uh, he's not, you know, he's, he's a little rough. That same day, hell no, nah, went there. Yeah. Fuck that. I want to go see him. As soon as I seen him, half of his body is not is Careless. is not working, but we're good. <laughs> we're here. But he's so intentional. So to my whole point is, look at the people that are around you. Look at the people that influence you. Mm. The people that, that you invite. People that you invite inside yeah. your home, it's to your fun. dinner table. Yeah. We're going to go eat after this. We're going to go and break bread. Who is there for the right intentions and can bring food to your table yeah. and not just come and get a plate to go? Oof. Look at that. How many people do you invite and they just come and get a plate and they take off? Yeah. And, and don't be afraid also if there's somebody that you brought into your life during a specific season in your time where you guys were, there was a reason, there's a reason why you bond with friends, right? Yeah. Whether it's like. If you think about it, it's like, okay, if you really like to go out and party, you're going to naturally attract those people because it's somebody that, oh my God, this is my person. They get me like, yeah. yes, like you're crazy like me. Right. And then once you slowly start changing in your life, you're like, well, I'm, I'm headed in this direction. And then sometimes you come to find what was really bonding you guys. Was it a genuine friendship or was it yeah. the fact that you guys just both really like to go out? Yeah. And, and sometimes like those people are sometimes just meant to be in your life for that season. They serve their purpose. There's other people that are meant to be in your life, your whole life that will be with you through every chapter. They're not going to judge you because you've evolved into somebody completely different. Yeah. But sometimes your, your friend of your circle of friends can be your jail cell. If you're scared of, yeah. of losing them because you want to continue down a path. You're not, you don't want to stay the stagnant or the same person, yeah. but the people that are bringing out maybe certain actions or qualities in you that you don't want anymore. You want to keep them around. Cause you're like, Oh, this is my friend though. But you also want to continue growing. So you, you have to choose who, again, like who you're allowing to, to influence you like on that daily basis and really see what's really like bonding you to this energy person. too. Yeah. yeah. Like well, what's really keeping me in this person's yeah. life. It, I mean, it's just celebrating birthdays. Who do you invite? For the longest, I'm mm. about to turn 28. I've never had a birthday party. You haven't? Nah, it's another day for me. Yeah. Why? Because how I told them, and I've always When's said your birthday? it. October 25th. Oh, it's coming up. Yeah, well. and I always say it. I'm just blessed that I made it another year when, for the longest time, I didn't think I was making it over 22, 23. Wow. But I'm here. Mm -hmm. And these days, I'm celebrating at work, and I, I get my time. But my payback is... Being around people that I love and genuinely can be around all year, not just one day. Mm. I might have a party. Again, shout out shout out my brother, bro. My brother is in a tough situation. And he had a party with 150 people. More. Shit hit the fan. Bad situation. Everything taken away. I can count in one hand how many people are there right now. For him, yeah. Me, his mom, his dad, his sister. And one more person. And that's a tough reality for people to face sometimes. Because oh, yeah. I consider myself someone, I have a lot of acquaintances a lot. Like, But I think about moments like that, and I'm like, okay, now look, right now in this season of my life, it's like me, my mom, my grandma, my chickens. I got some chickens. My, uh, <laughs> my dog <laughs> and my trailer that I just bought. I'm like, you know, you... So, and also, like, if you don't have a billion friends, you guys do not even, like you said, don't stress it. It's like you can have a one or two solids that'll go so much further than having like yeah. 300 people at a party Facts. that are there for maybe not all the right reasons or whatever you those, know those guys so if you guys are still watching after i'm just kidding thank you guys for watching subscribing listening um again putting us in positions where we get to share our message and we get to share these stories with everybody watching if it's on instagram it's on tiktok if it's on apple uh podcast spotify Thank you so much. But how you guys always wait for and how we've always done, we always give out quotes that resonate with us Ooh. in our journey at the moment right now. Because we go through journeys. We go through through events that change us. And we remember a certain quote. We remember a certain uh, words that were said to us throughout our journey, whether it's our parents, friends, even a stranger. Um but we're about to hit you guys with this. So, Becca, you got no, one? She can't go no? 
Jess? Okay, yeah, I do. There's one that I always say, and it came more so to career stuff because I've done a long career in radio and um, music industry, and I've always done things for the first time that are scary. So the first one I always say is feel the fear, but do it anyway. You're going to be scared first time you do a podcast, first time you, you know, whatever. In life, like, you you have to push yourself outside your comfort zone. First time you do anything, like, it's going to be scary. You're going to be like, what am I doing? But yeah. feel the fear, embrace that fear. That makes you feel more alive than staying in a bubble ever will. And do it anyway. So that's, like, the one that I always kind of have lived by career or just life-wise. But the one spiritually that I really um, love that I was scrolling on Instagram the other day was, the God within you is stronger than any, any, any enemy that's against you. So think about it. Like whether your enemy is an addiction, whether it's, you know, you have an addiction to drugs, alcohol, porn, whatever. If you, if the enemy to you is, um, I don't know, something that's hindering your growth, whatever it might be. The God within you right now is so much stronger than anything this world can throw at you that is putting you down or making you feel less than or making you feel thoughts of suicide or sadness or depression. That God is way stronger. So I would say, like, those two are probably my favorite. I love that. Come on. You you know I got to end this one. So <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, I just watched this video on Instagram last night. I don't know if I should, like, read the whole video because it's, like, this guy talking. But anyways, at the end of the video, he basically says, um, hold on, let me wait till it comes up. Because <laughs> I don't want to, like, mm. so he says, I'm a mosaic of everyone I've ever loved, even for a heartbeat. So a mosaic is basically, like, a, like say, a tile, right? Oh. In order to make a floor, you need how many tiles? Yeah. So if I loved you for a heartbeat, like something you did during that time frame, mm. I picked up from you, so I'm going to mm. tile it. Mm. And then something you taught me today, I'm going to also tile it. Yeah. So mm. I'm built up of everyone I've ever loved, basically. So it's wow. like I, I eat my ramen the way somebody taught me how mm. to eat it in 11th grade. I watch a movie that somebody else loved, so now I love it. So I'm basically, you know... Um, I also think that like nobody comes to your life for no reason. So you always learn something from someone and it sticks. Yeah. I love that. Like I wow. sometimes will That's eat good. my ketchup with um couple uh, fries. No, with um <laughs> black pepper. Because somebody I loved once ate that. Yeah. So now I do it sometimes. So I don't true. always do it, but sometimes I do it because yeah. I'm like, hey, why not? Let's do That's it today. So true. Yeah. You remember Everybody plays a part in your life, and it would be a dishonor and an injustice if we don't recognize that. Yeah. Every, Even if you ended on yeah, bad terms. Yeah, every every, for every sure. person that ever harmed us, every person that ever did something wrong to us, I forgive you because I need to, but I just know that played a big part in my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's who I am today. Uh, the quote that I got, and this was just sent to my by my mom a couple minutes ago mm -hmm. or a couple like an hour ago but it says today you could be talking to someone who is trying their best not to fall apart mm. so whatever you do today do with kindness in your heart so be intentional know that whatever smile someone has mm -hmm. it might come with a lot of pain and it may come with a lot of loss and in on their own or external and be kind. You never know that your smile and your kind words would change their their life's journey. You know, you may have a day or even just that moment. You may have a bad day but not a bad life. I am so overwhelmed. It's just like like I don't even know. Just like happy like I'm just like really happy. Like it makes me want to go out into the world and just be like, you look great and you look great. Like I don't know, it just it's I don't know. The podcast that you guys do just puts I don't know, it just it's a feel good it's it makes your soul feel good. And I feel like a lot of media doesn't because <laughs> I do you get tired sometimes of a lot of the toxic media that gets put out and the type of conversations people have are just very surface level. Yeah. You don't really get to have like those soulful conversations because we're all really emotional yeah. beings and we really be going through it all the time and sometimes we want to sweep that under the rug and just mask it again not yeah. in the healthiest way so it's just nice to Sit. have a conversation that makes you genuinely feel good and genuinely want to be a better person yeah. 
you know i don't know live your life are awesome thank you thank you for coming with that today too yeah yeah i I, I love that i I love both of your guys i i definitely leave leave today in this this episode with with a sense of of happiness and and grace and Mm -hmm. and so much and fulfillment yeah that's the word fulfillment and having conversations like this is what really fuels one person like myself to do better and to portray that to the next person. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. You may not have the best day. You may have the worst moment right now, but I'm going to make sure when we interact, I'm going to show you that there is kindness and there is happiness because it's who, it's who we are. It's who we are. And I'm glad we had this conversation yeah. today. You guys are living in your purpose for sure. You can yeah. just tell. I told you. Really when good. when we were trying to set this up a month ago, I told you it's going to come on the right time. So yeah, you yeah. let me know when the right time is. I knew we're, we were not going to force it in yeah. the midst of of, yeah, of a war that was happening. Yep. And we are administrating this episode at the most perfect time. Yeah. Not our time. It's how we said throughout this whole podcast. Mm-hmm. The power above is the one that put us together yeah. today. So, Jess, Amazing. thank you for having me. Thank you so me. much for coming. I, I, Becca, awesome. thank you for sitting in today. <laughs> so, yeah. again, if you guys are watching, if you guys heard all this far, hopefully you guys took some gems out of this that there was a lot thrown out. Mm-hmm. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you watch, share, comment, share it to your tias, tios, sanchos, novios, novias, <laughs> <All> <laughs> <of> <laughs> everybody in above. The so. whole community. <laughs> <laughs> it's also like podcast. Most authentic, most organic, baby. We out. <laughs>